Good morning, my name is Natalie Fanny Gonzalez. I'm the chair of the Economic Development Committee. And today, Wednesday, April 17, we start with our third uh, budget session. Uh, for the committee, we're going to be discussing uh, the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation, NDA, the incubator program, the Economic Development Fund, and urban districts. I'm here with my colleagues, Councilmember Marilyn Balkan and Councilmember Evan Glass. And in a few minutes, we're going to be joined by our fourth member, Councilmember uh, Lorian Sales, or so we hope. Um, so before we start, just a recap. Um, after this session today, and this is giving time for Lorian to show up, as you can. Um, we are, the next one will be on the 25th on, um, actually that's gonna be a really interesting one. The Business Center team is gonna come and you're gonna be back. So I look forward to having that discussion with you and also visit uh, the Conference of Visitors Bureau. Um, ABS, we have a lot to talk to ABS. Stay tuned and we need to follow up on that one. Uh, in the Biohub, Maryland, and as well as some CIP programs. Um, and then I just want to note that the last session on May 2nd, the date might change because we're going to do that one as a joint committee session with GO. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense since last year, as you may remember, when we had TEPs coming in, we basically gave a recommendation to the GO committee. We might as well just have them, have them all together. Um, so that's going to happen if I haven't told you below. Surprised. Um, and then the thing, the other thing that we'd love to highlight, especially last session that we have on April 12th when we had TPS, um, I thought it was awesome that we basically this committee created two new positions that are now going to be for DPS in terms of um, licensing for restaurants. As you may know, Montgomery County, sadly, and we, we need to be our own self-critics in order to improve. Uh, we only have one position to review licensing for restaurants on their HHS, because it's, it's not DPS, it's also HHS. And it was that person was, that job was divided into two people. Just imagine how confusing that is. And now, if things go well, well with the rest of the county council, which I'm um, I trust that it will be, now we're creating two new positions to analyze licensing for restaurants. We're truly really struggling to open up businesses and that's connected to, with everything that we're doing in Montgomery County because yes, we wanna have more jobs, but people need to eat and we need to have great restaurants to really um, enhance and push for more vibrant communities. So I wanted to mention that. And with that, I think we can start. Um, Balal, can you please take us to the package? And then I'm going to have the county executive team to speak about the incubator program because that will be aligned with a conversation with NCEDC. So that's going to be the order. If you can please start. Sounds good. I was planning on just maybe outlining the whole conversation from incubator to NCEDC. Um, okay, sounds good. A um, couple of quick uh, technical corrections I just wanted to point out um, before we get started. Uh, there is a small typo on the first page of the MCEDC report, the total shift is 1,947,795, not 495. That will be corrected. Um, incubators uh, accidentally added in the retirement savings when it should have been subtracted. Um, so that number will be adjusted. Um, and there was a miscommunication um, from the March 27th amendments where I didn't receive the full PDF, just personally, me personally, and I think um, Basically, there's a million dollars in state aid in addition to the three million that's proposed from the March 27th Amendment for Incubator CIP, which makes the four million dollar proposal whole. Um, so you can discuss that um, and sort of ask questions about what they're recommending there. Um, but the money is accounted for, and to the staff packet um, misrepresented that. Um, and then MCEDC also provided some more information on their vacancies that they can speak to um, as well. Um, okay, so moving through the packet, um, starting with incubators, as I mentioned, there is a $3 million in one-time uh, funding from the March 27th Amendment to support capital improvements at the three existing incubators. Um, and that will be supported by $1 million in state aid. And according to the PDF, which we can attach, and this is an addendum, they're planning on spending the money in FY25. Um, Moving on, uh, incubators also uh, has a recommended increase of 1.95 million um, that staff considers to be an add, but it is, cons it is designated as a shift in the budget. Um, 
but because of staff's recommendation, if the county, if the committee does approve uh, any portion of the 1.95 million towards this program, it would go on the new and enhanced programs list. Um, as for what the proposal is, um, you know, executive staff responses in the description suggest it's a new program, which is um, why we think it's an ad. Um, the money is divided into 1.8 million for programming, um, which there's a proposal in the packet and they can speak to it, and then $147,000 uh, for a FTE that would be a term position to support that uh, effort. Um, the, the position is a discrete expenditure that we can identify. I think obviously the role is something the committee may want clarification about. Um, the $1.8 million, um, somewhat uh, more undefined, but there is a general timeline that the staff has indicated about how that um, programming will be done, but although sort of the agents and sort of the expectations um, and some of the mechanics could be uh, clarified potentially. Um, staff recommends that um, the committee revisit this proposal for a potential supplemental appropriation as executive staff work through the idea, uh, unless the committee is satisfied with the proposal um, as it's uh, presented in its current state. Um, moving on, the uh, county executive also proposed $4 million for MCEDC. Um, and so any increase above that number would go on the new and enhanced programs list because this is that's what the executive recommended. Um, and then there was an additional 1.95, um, or oh, that 1.95 that's going to incubators is ostensibly a shift from MCEDC, although as staff pointed out, that's not necessarily um, our, uh, we don't necessarily agree with that designation. Um, but I think the, the question from staff or the committee potential would be, you know, is there a justification for potentially lowering the level of service or if the executive believes it wouldn't level the serve, lower the level of service, then why? Um, that's sort of the, the question I think that we would want to um, explore a little bit. Um, and then, you know, MCEDC uh, could explain a little bit how their level of service um, in the previous fiscal year matched the $6 million appropriation that they received um, and what would be diminished with the current um, uh, proposal which they've also outlined um, in their in the staff packet and in their responses to staff so um, the recommended budget of four million just to be clear is actually lower than the original appropriation MCEDC was seated with in FY 17 which was 4.2 million and so the four million would not have kept up with inflation so there's a fundamental change in the expectations of the work program of MCEDC so we just want to make that clear um, and just to Reiterate, I think, yeah, if the committee wishes to increase MCEDC's recommended budget, um, yeah, it would go on the new and enhanced programs list. So that's sort of the outline. There's the CIP item, um, there's incubators, which uh, staff considers to be an ad, uh, executive is recommended as a shift. Um, so it's just worth exploring that proposal independently. And then there's the question of um, can MCEDC absorb a cut to the level of service or, or does the committee agree with the executive that it wouldn't reduce their level of service? Um, Very well. Thank you so much for that uh, overview. I'm uh, now going to ask the Ken executive team to please um, answer many of the questions that the committee has requested through the package and Balol has pointed out and explained um, the Ken executive's request. Good morning, Chair Fanny Gonzalez and members of the committee. Really appreciate this opportunity to come before the economic, or well, the econ committee, to talk about the record investment in economic development that is contained in the county executive's FY25 recommended budget. Um, I, I've handed out uh, before the session a, a chart that shows nearly $50 million in investment across multiple cost centers from uh, site developments that are in parts of the county to our business district grant program to the innovation ecosystem recommendations, including new partnerships this year with, with the Henry Jackson Foundation and, um, and Maryland Tech Council for the, a bio hub in Montgomery County. Um, so there's a lot happening in our budget for economic development. Um, uh, we, we are here today to talk specifically about a couple budgets. One is our innovation ecosystem, our in incubator NDA budget, and the other is the budget for MCEDC. Um, uh, and I just want to start by saying uh, MCDC is a valuable partner to the county. Being an independent entity, they can do things the county cannot. Um, and in this year's um, budget, the county executive is, is seeking to focus and narrow the attention of MCDC on three critical, highly critical areas um, that are important to all of us, to our economy. 
The first is strategic business attraction. The second is strategic business retention. And the last is marketing. Um, and um, in, in the county executive's recommendations, uh, the, 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 his um, recommendation is that all other duties be placed aside um, while MCDC uh, develops a plan and executes on these three major areas. Can I just interrupt you very yes, quickly, Mr. Herman? I just want to uh, remind folks who are watching, this committee has focused on the last year to ensure that we do exactly that, and that has been in coordination. MCDC, and we have said it many times, but so this is no surprise, should we only focus on business attraction, retention, and marketing? That's it. So just wanted to reiterate that because we have had a specific work sessions on those topics with them. And, and I appreciate that, Chair yeah. Friendly Gonzalez. We, um, we are, um, uh, the budget also uh, uh, in our economic development budget makes significant new in investments in the business center and in our incubator NDA, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about um, in, in a minute. And these lines between what MCDC does and what the county business center and what Judy Costello does, um, sh while there is a collaboration and will continue to be a collaboration on everything in this budget, um, the, the, the lead and the investment needs to be in one pot or the other not, uh, and, and not muddled across entities. So um, uh, this, um, as you know, that, and we'll talk more next week about the business center, um, they are a significant um, value add to the county government. Um, and with the implementation of, of their CRM system, we are able to track the, the contacts, the, the value of the contacts, and the, the results we get, we get from our face-to-face -face interaction with Montgomery County businesses. Um, and likewise, with the incubator NDA, we are seeking to create a, um, a, a system not based on something we thought up of overnight, but, but solid research that has been performed um, dating back several years ago with the county council um, in wh what direction our, our incubators need to head um, and um, also coupled with real world um, experience and research that uh, Ms. Costello has, has done on what our competitor jurisdictions are doing and they are far ahead of us in capacity, uh, capability, and outcomes. So um, while uh, the first step of the, uh, is to catch up to where they are and hopefully one day exceed, but that, that investment that you see in this budget in the incubator and NDA is intended to meet that challenge and provide that investment we, we need. Um, I'm going to uh, also say that regarding MCEDC, we are, we've taken steps to more closely collaborate with uh, MCDC leadership. Uh, we have we now have um, uh, weekly meetings between CAO Madaleno and and um, uh, and Bill Tompkins and uh, about prospects and areas we can collaborate. Uh, the county executive has made efforts to talk individually with board members um, about the opportunities that he sees for our economy and our economic development outreach, um, and we. Um, we will continue to engage with MCDC leadership and board members as we create, um, as we work together to, to focus on these key areas and to um, put in place uh, metrics so that we can gauge the return on our investment um, in, in what is uh, an organization with enormous potential. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Judy Costello, who can um, go into the details of, of the incubator NDA budget. Judy? Thank you, Ken. Could I make a recommendation, Madam Chair? There is a lot in this packet, and it's broken down um, by four different areas. Uh, and I would, you know, uh, the MCEDC, the incubator, the EDF, yeah. and the urban districts. Um, I think it would be much more helpful if we talk strictly about MCEDC at this point in time. Just give me a second, because I do need to hear from them, and that's what I told them at the beginning. So once they're uh, done, okay. we're going to continue. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All righty. Good morning, Madam Chair and Council Members. Thank you for the opportunity to talk here. I'm, I'm focusing on the recommendations that the county executives 
making for enhancing our, our incubator innovation system. As all of you know, the county owns three incubators, one of which in Germantown has wet lab space, one in Rockville that's focused primarily on IT, and then another one in Silver Spring that's, that was designated MFT, um, has some government contractors. The Rockville space is full. The Germantown and um, Silver Spring space have some, some vacancies. So the county executive asked me to look at the incubators review what's happening there and figure out if we're maximizing the, the historic invest, the long time investment that's been made in them to date over many, many years. And what we find is that there has been good work by the county staff and, uh, and contractors supporting the activity, but it pales in comparison to our competitors in terms of what those incubators and the innovation system looks like. I think Mr. Hartman shared a PowerPoint with you and I'll give the high level overview. Our immediate and long term strategies as you have in the PowerPoint are basically to expand the capacity and the programming at the incubators. So capacity, ensuring that there is uh, 2024 style co-working office, plug and play, shareable lab space, space that, that companies from elsewhere in Maryland, from elsewhere in the United States and from around the world would feel comfortable coming into and excited about being in the physical space. But that's a tiny part of it because our inc we want our incubators to be more than a real estate play. If you look at innovation hubs around the country and the world, it's not only about the real estate, but it's about having technical assistance who can help in Montgomery County, we're blessed to have a wide variety of advanced technology sectors. It's not just biotech, but we have satellite, we have cyber, we have en energy, we have companies with a lot of smart ideas and it would be difficult for any one government agency to have experts in all of those areas. So bringing technical expertise to bear, bringing funding to help companies in that famous valley of death to get from conception to market, that's part of this proposal, and being able to do, accept tenants, give them advice, help them connect with the networks that they need in a quick, meaningful way is something that our government is, we keep get, making things more efficient and quick, but we're just not as fast as folks who are outside government. So that's the underline, that's the overall idea. Um, specifically, I was, I was asked to do research, and some of you, um, well, I know Council Member Glass visited T-Hub in India. We actually visited three um, uh, bioparks in India. We more recently, and with Council Member Fanny Gonzalez, saw what our competitors in Taiwan are doing, but you don't have to go that far to see robust innovation systems that have funding, technical support, programming, entrepreneur training available on a ready basis. Right up to 70 in Frederick, they have just announced and built a new FITSI Innovation Center, which some of you may get have the opportunity to tour later. In Baltimore, um, I was worked for the state and was actively um, visiting and involved with the Biopark. Johns Hopkins Tech Ventures and BW Tech. What they have done in the last 15 years is amazing and the whole focus for each of those entities is bring technical resources, funding and mentors who have, who have entrepreneur leadership experience to help companies get their ideas commercialized. So our program um, is trying to maximize the facilities and the use of county dollars by bringing globally recognized third party technical experts, programming managers and innovation facility operators to the county. Instead of building a 10 million or 20 million dollar building at funding 20 staff, tens of millions of dollars, that's not the best use of county funds. Leverage the investment you and others have already made in our facilities and add within this 1.8 budget the ability to have weekly, excuse me, monthly or more frequent educational programming to bring technology accelerator cohorts to the county to convert the space in the way I described to make it more flexible 
And then our idea also is to leverage the private and nonprofit investment in the county by expanding our official network to other innovation centers. So you, the Henry Jackson Foundation was mentioned. As you know, we've already formed an MOU. We have spoken with private developers, uh, private landlords in the county who have incubator-like space, but it's larger than what the early stage entrepreneur needs. But they, they and some of you know, I don't want to name facilities, some of you know other innovation centers are all interested in joining us with an expanded innovation network that's under the Montgomery County brand because it raises the profile of their tenants and their facilities and ours. We would only partner with them where they are adding value to what we're doing, but by collecting and partnering everything under a larger umbrella, we would be more able to compete with places like Cambridge and the West Coast. Our, our technology companies, large and small, are spread across the county. And by pulling them together and networking them and promoting them in a meaningful fashion, that's part of the idea to expand and connect what we have. Ms. Ms. Costello, can you be, because the question is, we are shifting direct business technical support and educational programming from MCDC to, to this incubator program, right? So, and I, I will need you as, once they're done, you're gonna speak next. I will need you to start on this on this question too. How are you gonna do? How are you gonna be using that 1.8 million dollars specifically? Sure, and I should say I, I just need you to really yes. emphasize why this shift from them to you. Sure, and I will say I de I would develop the recommendations separate from the source of funding, looking at researching, and I'm not naming them because if we move forward, this would be an RFP process. But for example to provide technical assistance to 100 companies throughout within our existing incubators and throughout that expanded innovation system, to provide technical, first technical assessment where they meet someone, a third party expert meets with a company, assesses what they need to get to market, then provides them the advice and the networks and a plan, plus a, an accelerator cohort, the estimate for that is 700, $50,000. That's hands-on experts uh, addressing 100 companies in our ecosystem across industry sectors. The, um, the similar experts who offer programming, not just a lunch, I shouldn't say not just, but not a, an ad hoc lunch and learn by a certain provider, but regular programming that in other cities draws entrepreneurs from throughout the communities and experts helping them education network programming. There are third party f people we have spoken to who would start that in the as soon as they were funded. Their estimate for the year of that is $400,000. That's regular pro programming, all the events management, the tech, but it's more than events management. It's bringing the technical expertise, the outreach, the marketing and the staffing of that. So that's 400,000. The, the physical facility operations, we talked to a couple people domestically and overseas. They would, as soon as, if they won an, uh, a contracting vehicle, they, the first thing they would do was visit our, in person, our facilities and learn about the ecosystem and do an analysis of the physical upgrades that would be necessary. And, and meet with the existing staff and make hire two people to start the management, the third party management of the operations. And that, that plus then the architectural design and the planning design to trigger their management, say by the end of FY25, is the balance of those funds. It's anticipated that if this moved forward that because the next question you may wonder is, well, do we need that in the future? But it's anticipated, and Gene, can, Mr. Smith can talk more directly on this, that the funds that are currently in a contract, we have a contract with a third party right now, to not do programming, not technical assistance, but facility management, that those funds would be used to augment and pick up the third party operations. Does that clarify a little? Yes, but, but I, how are you tracking success with this? 
Because so at we, the end of the day, you're going to have to come back to this committee and say, this is what we have achieved if you so, want this to continue in the future. So I completely agree. I think Mr. Hartman shared it that you'll see detailed in the PowerPoint, but we would be tracking number of companies, vacancies, dollars raised through, through customers and revenue, commercialization progress, dollars raised also through grants, jobs hired, square footage, there's an outline in your packet, and the, the measurement of any of these, of any of the programs we're talking about today is very important. And, and success doesn't happen overnight, but if we're tracking it, as we're now able to do with the Business Center and the CRM, you would be able to see also impressions and outreach and involvement of other innovation, innovators in the community, including those from historically underrepresented communities. There's a list that outlines all of that. Perfect. Uh, do you, Mr. Smith, do you have anything to add? Okay, no, I great. Don't, thank, you. thank you so much. So I'm going to start now with uh, ending after MCDC um, ends the remarks, then we're going to open it up for questions for these two items. If you can please start with the incubator and maybe re reactions from what you hear from the CAN executive team, that would be great. Uh, good morning to everybody, and we will jump around a little bit to make sure that we cover everything. Uh, we do have our chair and vice chair here who would also like to make a couple of remarks, but uh, let me, uh, can we start with them and then, all right. Mr. Kevin. Um, good morning. I'll, I'll introduce myself just, but I'm sure you know who I am, Kevin Beverly. I, I come to this as, your, as the board chair of MCEDC um, and a resident of Montgomery County now for close to 50 years. And again, I'm listening to this, um, and it's frustrating to me as a business leader here formerly. I, I had a $200 million company here in Montgomery County. I sold it in, in um, 2019. And one of, the, one of the highlights I recall was when the decision was made to create MCEDC outside of government, giving it an opportunity to be more creative more innovative with some flexibility. Um, what, I've, what I've learned is over the last several years is that legislation gets passed and then oftentimes parts of it gets ignored. And if you were to look at the legislation that created this entity, you find a much broader um, agenda for what it should be doing. And like I said, I was excited when this organization was created because I'd had my experiences with it inside of government, and they weren't good. Um, and I think my experience wasn't unique. So it was exciting to think that we were going to make a different change. And right now, to me, it looks like we're trying to claw it back into government, which I think has been happening for the last four or five years, to have this claw back into government, which I think is a mistake. I think that some of the things I hear him talking about I, I think are interesting, but bringing them back into government tells our community, it tells our region exactly who we are. And, and I think it sends a message to those who think about coming here. It's just another hurdle we have to overcome in that conversation about why, why invest here in Montgomery County. Our revenues uh, and tax base here in the county are going down as a result of businesses leaving, deciding that it's more or easier to do stuff elsewhere. Um, what we really have to think about here is our philosophy. The, the budget, and again, my points are, because you're gonna, all of the stuff that Bill and others are gonna talk about are in the documents. But this is really, to me, about a philosophy of how you want Montgomery County. We have a reputation, not just here in Montgomery County, but in the state, as not being business friendly. And when we do stuff like what you're hearing here, it continues just to play right to those who use it against us about what they're doing in Montgomery County. And again, you made a comment earlier about um, our be our self-critic. Uh, I live here, I love it here, but I'm also a critic of things that I think we need to do and things we should be trying to do to improve our position regionally and nationally uh, because eventually 
it's, it catches up with us. And, and every time we do something like being described here, and it's not that they're all bad ideas. That's not my point. My point is, is that you want to be seen as a county, we as a state, of embracing our businesses. And, and we don't get that feeling. This is not something that says you're embracing what could be innovation outside of government. Um, what we're seeing is government needs to be this really big, present thing instead of our businesses driving this. Thank you, Mr. Beverly. Um. Hi, good morning. I'm Ilana Fine, the Vice Chair of the Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation. Uh, thank you for having me here today. I've had the pleasure of serving on the board for the past five years, and in these years, I've learned that MCEDC provides critical support to businesses by connecting them to top talent, premier locations, partners, and other resources. We, as members of the board, represent the voice of the business community as appointed by the county executive and can tell you that the business community counts on MCDC to support, attract, retain, and expand businesses in the, in the county. I'll certainly be brief, but on behalf of the business community, I'd like to make a few quick points. First, while we're here to specifically talk about uh, MCDC's budget, I just want to paint a bigger picture and highlight that the proposed $50 million mentioned of the 6.8 million FY25 budget uh, is, um, only represents uh, a small percentage of that bu budget. Examining the numbers and the narrative, the budget seems to exclude businesses and stakeholders as stakeholders and contributors to our county. Continue to continue to provide the education, social, and other infrastructure priorities we all believe are important to serve our community and stay competitive, we must also nurture a strong and thriving, profitable business community. One is just not possible without the other. In other words, the budget can not only serve the residents of the county, but also the businesses here and those we hope to attract. As we face stiff competition from neighboring communities and competitive jurisdictions around the globe, MCEDC works tirelessly to raise our brand awareness and encourage companies in key industries to locate and expand in our county. And as we've seen, our work is paying off. However, any company or organization will tell you it takes decades to build a brand and you must continue to invest. Lastly, since we are discussing incubators and entrepreneurship also today, it's important to remember that MCEDC is still a startup. We're still finding the best way to align our products and services with our customers, the businesses of Montgomery County. Therefore, it is critical that MCEDC receives the appropriate funding to continue to grow and mature as an organization so we can continue the momentum we have built to propel economic growth and opportunity in Montgomery County. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Bill Tompkins. Uh, good morning. Bill Tompkins, President and CEO of Montgomery County Economic Development Corporation. I'm sure you all saw the Washington Post this morning talking about Amazon cutting back and Amazon having problems, Arlington County having problems with economic development. It quoted Holly Sullivan, worldwide vice president of economic development, and she lives in walking distance of this building, who is saying economic development is a long-term investment. This is not the time to cut back on the focused activities that MCEDC does to attract, retain, and grow businesses here and to do the marketing that's required. Now, uh, I will respond to the question about the incubators. I'm glad that we're, are we okay? Uh, our, uh, continuing to focus and invest in that area. But what is uh, not clear to me is that we don't have a line item in our budget for technical services and educational uh, training. That Our budgets are tied to three categories. It is um, business development, which includes those three things, marketing, and a small budget for growth looking further down the pike because of the long-term investment. Yes, we have overhead. And by cutting back, our overhead we, is difficult to cut back because we also share space with WorkSource Montgomery, Visit Montgomery, we have lease requirements, we have the ACE loan program, the accounting requirements for supporting that are very strict, the auditing, the legal cost, 
So when we look at these scenarios that uh, we'll get into a little bit later, uh, it is draconian if we were to go that route. Uh, what I would like to focus on are two, two areas, and I'm actually going to go to three. We're not going to jump through these slides. Um, when you look at the investment, if you can keep going, uh, when you get to the slide that compares us to other jurisdictions, and I'll comment on this. Uh, we are focused. This is what we do. You can go through every line in our budget and say, tell me what does not match. Uh, when we looked at other jurisdictions, it's that next slide. I keep going. Sorry. That's okay. This one? Uh, no, keep going. It's, uh, stop right there. Oh, okay. One, we've had a successful history of getting good recommendations from the county executive's office to grow our budget. And we report on, yes. Yeah. Uh, we will send you this. Uh, is it the same thing that we have in the package? No. no. This is different. Brand new. Okay. We, we just added, we took some outtakes, but we added a couple of things. Hey, give me one second. Sure. Where is the clerk? <laughs> yeah. We, um, Tommy, can you find the staff so he can help a lot with the PowerPoint? Jeez, there's a bit. Can you go back one second? I'm sorry, Mr. Tompkins. Oh, the one that has um, the comparison side of jurisdiction. Oh, there is. Never mind. Right. Okay, Thank you. Then. Never mind, Tommy, if you hear me. All right. It's, it's, it's don't worry. Yeah. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so in addition to, it's up now, uh, in addition to the consistent funding that we've had, uh, which we are grateful for, we went from a level 5 million to 6.2, rounding off to about 6 last year. And the reason we requested 7.1 is because in reality, if you look at our financial statements, we spent $6.8 million last year, 6.4, sorry. We're spending $6.8 million, and the $7.1 million request was to maintain the level of services, mostly marketing and business development. To maintain that momentum, we've put in this slide deck, and it's in your packet, what the return on investment has historically been, what it was last year. You're talking about tens of millions of dollars in uh, tax revenues that were generated. Uh, the valuations are there. But you also look at these other jurisdictions and what they are spending on economic development. And we are in the middle to the low end. Even Prince George's County is at $5.9 million. Look at Fairfax. You know, D.C. is off the map. I mean, you understand that. But look at Prince William County, $5 million. Loudoun County, 5.2. Fairfax, we always talk about Fairfax, $9.5 million. How can, are we, yeah. can I say something very quickly? Since sure. you mentioned Loudoun County, I just want to remind folks that this committee organized uh, an agro-tourism tour of Loudoun mm -hmm. County about know, three weeks ago. And uh, we're, we have a fabulous video about it that we're going to show at some point. Um, and their economic development office is within the government. Just want to make sure that's clear here, that you can have jurisdictions where you can have, you know, or yeah, model and others that are just government run. And it's this one is government run. Right. Alexandria, Arlington, Fairfax, Prince George's are all the same models that we have. At the end so, of the day, it's optics in marketing, which is your assignment. It is. But go ahead. It is mixed. Um, so what I would like to do is to jump into the four scenarios. And we can also respond to the marketing. Uh, in the packet, there is a detailed analysis of how our marketing is performing. Um, and so I will basically answer the questions rather than reinforcing what happens with the marketing. So the four scenarios that we have are what we've requested, which is $7.1 million, slightly higher than what we will spend this year. The second is the reason it says 5.9 to 6.2. The county executive um, re uh, recommended $6.2 million for this year, but we agreed to five nine fifty dollars because we had $250,000 in carryover. So the 5.9 to 6.2 is basically where we are this year, and that maintains the momentum that we have. Uh, when we went to the four, the reason we got to 5.2 is we said, suppose you split the difference and said we would take an 18% reduction, which still sounds crazy. We would still have to lay people off. We would still have to reduce our marketing. And there are a lot of things that you will just not see. While if we had more time, 
we would show you, we highlight it in one of our ads, Council, uh, County Executive Mark Elridge talking about why economic development is so important here. It appears in our MoCo Minute, and we highlighted why AstraZeneca is such a success. That stuff goes away. David Marriott testifying to the fact that this is a place where we want people to do business. DECA Industries talking about, they came out of the incubators, by the way. These are all businesses that we highlight to tell the story of Montgomery County and to talk about why it's worked for them. That will go away if we um, significantly reduce this budget. There's no question about it. And then at the $4 million recommendation, we could only get to 4.5. We would have to literally reduce our marketing budget by 70% and lay off at least 12 FTEs, and that's just getting to uh, four and a half million. How would that affect you? We Can you give me examples and, and show? Okay, so if you take our business development group, you will not have people doing the outreach because we would have half the number of people doing it. You would, we, if you take our key categories, uh, life sciences, uh, corporate, uh, corporate headquarters, international, international would have to go off. Uh, because we would not have the people or the money to support both our efforts and what the county executive is doing. So just when you say international, you mean the person who's in charge of attracting businesses from yes. overseas? It's, it's two components. Yes, that is correct. Both what we do directly and what we do in partnership with the county executive. Because those are also, by the way, paid for, as you know, out of our budget. Um, and we do believe that that is an opportunity. You heard uh, Ms. Costello talk earlier about trips that two of the four of you have been on. We have another one coming up in, on May the 6th to Korea and China. Two of our members are going with the county executive and Ms. Costello. We believe and support the opportunity, not just for the trade missions, but to do much more than that in terms of an international strategy. Uh, it is in our charter that we should be supporting underserved business communities, especially women, uh, businesses of color, uh, and we do have a person that is dedicated to that looking at the target industries that we have, that would have to go away because we would have to prioritize where the best opportunities for growth would be. And you just, you can't do it with $4 million. As was pointed out, that is less than the original appropriation we received in 2017. So it's not just about uh, inflation. It's about the added responsibilities that we have taken on at your request. The Economic Development Strategic Plan, by law, has to happen. We have to do it. And if we don't have the money to do it, either with staffing or to hire a consultant, and that plan has to be really good because it affects the entire county, not just what MCEDC does. It's about transportation. It is about housing. It is about talent. And that's got to be critically important to the economic development vitality of this county. Thank you so much, Mr. Tompkins. Um, this is how we're going to be doing this. I, I needed to have the incubator conversation because it does have impact with MCDC. So, but first, we're going to take on the MCDC budget, looking at the programs. So we're going to do that round first, and then after we're done, we're going to go back to the incubators and ask those questions, because they do relate to each other. That's why I set it up this way. So we're going to start with uh, Council Member Balcom. Um, thank you. Thank you all for being here today. I want to specifically shout out the board members who are here today. I, um, I am the Council's liaison for the board, and I just want to thank you for your passion. I'm always impressed by the level of energy that you bring to every discussion and um, uh, your contribution. And I just want to thank you for being here today, but for, for being involved in this process. Um, so I do have a lot of questions and concerns about the reduction. And I do, I think it's important to just completely separate the two discussions mm -hmm. because when this was initially framed, it was um, framed as a shift um, from the MCEDC to the incubator. But that's not really what's happening. There's the incubator has an increase that, um, that we can talk about, and, and I have a lot of um, things to say about that. I, you know, I've been involved in the incubators for a very long time. So, um, but, but 
the two are completely different. And so I, I think we need to just uh, remember that. And um, I think that there's been confusion in discussions about, about that. So I just wanted to make that point. So from, from the MCEDC's perspective, um, I think that it's important to note that um, there may be, uh, there may be uh, programs or initiatives within MCDC that MCC, MCDC is currently doing that perhaps could be um, uh, eliminated or shifted to the business center. Um, but we need to go through that um, in a very systematic, strategic way to identify what those specific things are um, and, and, and determine whether, whether it's a rational approach to move those functions. Um, but I also know that if we added up all those potential uh, programs, initiatives, um, even perhaps individuals, it wouldn't come close to $1.9 million. And so um, I think, so my, my biggest concern is that um, the, the proposed cut will have a significant impact on the core mission of MCDC. And so we need, whatever we do here today, and it's a long discussion, um, we need to make sure that uh, we're not entering into a spiral where if we make these cuts, we're not here a year from now saying they didn't meet their mission, so let's cut them more. And that just becomes um, a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I think that it's, I think it's important, and um, Mr. Tompkins, you started to talk about the scenarios, and I think that that's what we need to specifically look at is um, with the most, uh, with the proposed budget, the, the items of what, which, what is gonna go away I think is important. So let's talk primarily with staff, because when we look at the budget, the, the bulk of it is two primary issues. It's the staff, of course, which is um, in most budgets, staff is important. But then it's also the advertising because we, we purchase advertising. So um, the, 12, the 12 FTEs, I just want to clarify, are those FTEs that are current FTEs or are they um, FTEs that were proposed in the fuller, but your initial budget request. Those are all current FTEs. We did not request any increase in headcount for this year or next year. So those are current positions. That's taking people who are sitting in this room or who are watching and taking them out of their jobs. Okay. And have you had a chance to look at specifically, you know, which, which of those functions you could, you might have to cut? We absolutely have. Um, I would say it's very sensitive. Uh, of course. Mr. Ali has seen our documents. We shared them with him. We went through line item by line item under all four scenarios and said, this stays, this goes. Not just by line item, but by individual. And so it's obviously very sensitive. We prioritized and continue to priori prioritize business development with the secondary unfo focus on marketing, although both are important. Marketing has a much broader outreach, not just for our business attraction efforts, but really supporting the perception of the county and the, abis the ability for businesses on a much broader scale than we can hit with our feet on the street. Uh, so that was a very tough exercise to go back and forth, mm -hmm. but that is the priority. Okay, thank you. And I, I do just want to make a, a, a statement, and thank you for um, mentioning the sensitivity of this information. These are people's jobs. And so um, for, for the people here today and, and for other staff of MCDC, uh, please know that we're taking that very seriously. Um, so I appreciate that. And then the other point, have you been able to look at um, the, your work plan from the perspective of which items could be differentiated into what core mission uh, retention, uh, retention 
uh, attraction, uh, retention attraction uh, um, marketing. And of course, everything fits into that piece, right? But have you been able to look at um, initiatives, programs, specific items that you think don't fall into that core mission? Yes. And the area that is part of our core mission, but one could argue perhaps less of a focus, is entrepreneurship. And that's where businesses start. That's where venture capital comes in. We have uh, one person who is focused on that. We don't spend a lot of dollars. It's more FTEs. We have a little bit of money in our strategic planning budget. But that is the only area other than overhead, um, which is not tied to those two efforts. Research mm -hmm. is critical. We've been told by the county executive's office, thank you for hiring such a great head of research. It's making a difference already. We have a report that's about to come out on how we really do compete from a tax perspective and how to position that to give not only us, but uh, the businesses tools to understand how we can still work here and get rid of that perception that we are expensive or that we are overtaxed. It is complicated. Mm -hmm. It is not as simple as saying our, this rate is lower than that. But that research component is part of marketing and it supports that. We, don't, we, we aren't doing things that are not focused on our mission. If there are things that you see that you think are deviating, tell us and we'll say we agree, we don't agree. Mm -hmm. Part of it is time and we, we've moved away from placemaking as an example. That used to be a big part of our budget or a big part of our strategic initiatives budget. It shrunk from $800,000 to a total for everything of $150,000. So we have moved that money. We have listened to what even uh, the former council president has said, mission creep. You look at our budget, there is no mission creep. There are some things that we do to satisfy. Everybody in the county wants the attention from MCEDC. Tonight, I'm gonna be in White Oak and, I don't, and I'm proud of that. There is going to be a revitalizing White Oak from an economic development perspective. We don't try to pick jurisdictions, but we support them all. That's tonight at 6.30. We did our board meeting at the FDA to support the fact that the East County is strong. I came to your uh, council, uh, council committee chair, your hearing uh, in the restaurant to talk about supporting uh, the Ag Reserve and what we can do. And I'm, it's unfortunate that bill didn't go or isn't going where it needs to. Oh, wait. No, don't go oh, there. That's coming progress. in June. Don't kill okay. it yet. <laughs> All right. But, but the, point, the point is that I don't consider that a movement away from focus. It's understanding that there are opportunities there. And so when we look around at some of the smaller areas, I was with the Pike District Partnership Board of Directors for an entire day because we're try we believe or they believe that that is an economic jewel because of the land that is there. We talk about being landlocked. So we are moving around the county, not just looking at broad opportunities to bring businesses here, but to look at the individual communities. And it's time consuming. This is just like you. This is gonna be a 16 hour day for me. This afternoon, we are at USG. Some of you are gonna be there because we know we have a talent pipeline shortage. And we're looking at what we can do to fix part of that in our own backyard. I consider those critical components of what we do to, to push economic development in this county. I appreciate that. And so my, I, I, my point is that I think that when we look at your mission and identifying issues that, that perhaps should not be done by MCDC, those are strategic, um, a comprehensive look at what you're doing and a strategic uh, identification of what should move over. And my primary concern is that um, we need a scalpel versus a sledgehammer. And uh, I'm concerned that we're that we are not that the, these cuts are, are severe, too severe, and you, you may not be able to complete your mission. So thank you. As I said, we can go through every line item. And by the way, it is unless you identify it, or my colleagues, things that should be transferred over, and we're not talking about dollars, but services or programs, yeah. that either, I, I don't see that, but I have an open mind. And as they uh, explained, that what they would like to do is to expand the incubator program, not take services away from MCDC. 
That's that's why I wanted them to speak before you. But yes, uh, before I pass the, um, the opportunity to Councilmember Glass, going back to Councilmember Balcom's great questions on on how many positions you have, don't you have eight vacancies right now? We do. And so how the, is that related with the twelve positions? And sure. So the eight vacancies. This is a point in time. If we turn that report in on February first, we had three. We had four people who left in just the last four weeks. In fact, one of them is sitting behind me. And it's, uh, but it was, a good, it was good news because we had the opportunity for one of our employees to expand what she does and move into uh, county government. That position is one of the vacant ones. And so it, we can't fill it in four weeks. It takes us about three months on average based on our statistics to fill a position, which is actually pretty good. And so of the positions that we have that are vacant, it would be a combination of the jobs that we currently have. We're not going to walk away from having a senior vice president of business development. As you know, Mr. Stewart just left three weeks ago. You were at his going away party. We have o over 80 applicants for that position. And that is all, 80, yes. That is all about business development. And it also tells you that people want to work here. Uh, so in spite of the unemployment rate being so low, there are people out there who are willing to give up their jobs, if they can, to come and work for this organization. And that's the story that we need to keep pushing. Montgomery County is a great place to live and work. That's the story that we need to keep saying. Uh, Council Member Glass. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm not quite sure where to begin. There's a lot to unpack in this conversation, um, but I first want to start uh, by thanking Mr. Beverly and Ms. Fine for your leadership and for being here today and other members of the board uh, who are here and, and Councilmember Balcom um, representing the county council uh, on, on that board as well. Um, Mr. Beverly, I think you framed this conversation absolutely correctly. We are engaging in a conversation about an organization that was created within the last decade and by some measures is still getting its sea legs. Some are getting seasick by what they're seeing um, and some don't like the ocean at all. So what do we do? Really bad metaphor, I, I get it. <laughs> um, only two cups of coffee. Um, that's this discussion. Um, and I don't think this discussion should be happening now in the budget. I told that to the county executives team multiple times. This committee has been working under the leadership of this chair and with all my colleagues over the last year and three months since it was created specifically to dive into these issues, specifically to determine the success or lack thereof of various programs the county operates, which is why just yesterday this committee jointly, all four of us, introduced in, uh, a measure to codify the MOVE program because over the last year and four months or so, we have taken a deep dive into our real estate sector, seeing what works, what doesn't, and what supports are needed. So that legislation was a direct result of these conversations. And to have a conversation about MCEDC, within a three hour time period during the busiest time of the year does not serve any of us well. It is a conversation we really need to have. I'm not gonna be able to have the conversation I want to have during this time period. But that frames this discussion. What is MCEDC? How successful has it been? What do we want it to do? What resources does it need to do what we all want it to do or not want it to do? I think what complicates this, and I understand the executive's perspective, is that when we look at the job data, we look at the, the metrics that are reported upon by various agencies and organizations, who, who gets credit? Who gets blame? It's really hard. Does government, does the county executive, does the council, does MCEDC? Who does what? Whose fingers are pointed where? That is part of this conversation as well. 
Um, and so I wish the executive team engaged sooner. Sharing in the weeks before the budget that there were going to be budget changes sets up this conversation, but it does not set up the policy conversation that is required. MCEDC was created by law. We need to look at that law. We need to look at, as Mr. Tompkins correctly noted, the mission creep that has occurred. And since that term was first used by me last year at the very first meeting of this Economic Development Committee, that term has been used by all of my colleagues on this committee and even by the CEO of the organization. And I, rec I appreciate you recognizing it and pulling back, focusing on what the core mission is. And that's really what this conversation is. What's the core mission and how much public funding do you need to fulfill that? So now let me move on. Um, I appreciate Chair Fonny Gonzalez mentioning the, the eight vacant FTEs, the SVP, an economic, two economic development specialists, a senior graphic designer. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Tompkins sharing that those are point in times. We spent nearly all of last year's budget talking about vacancies in county government and how it is a rotating process. but. I'm glad to hear 80, you said, 80 applications. And for what job was that? That's for the Senior VP for Business Fantastic. Development, which is core to our mission. Very encouraging. It's a tight labor market, and to know that that many people want to want to do this work, that's wonderful. So let me d dive into specifics here, um, or lack thereof. Uh, within the packet, there have been some um, very specific pieces of information regarding marketing expenses and so forth, but what I did not see was a more detailed budget like that which was provided last year, more of you know, a P&L kind of format or, or just a budget format with previous year requests, this year's requests and projections. Do you have that or was that not provided in the packet? Um, I can double check the material that we received as part of the background. If not, we can get it and include it as an addendum to the packet. Okay, I would appreciate that uh, because the only specifics I seem to see, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, is is in the, um, the the marketing strategy. And so, just diving into that marketing strategy, which is a budget of 1.225 million, um, television advertising, 375 thousand dollars. Who are we advertising to? Can you elaborate a little bit on the, the marketing expense, uh, given that it is basically, uh, it, it closes the gap. I'm not sure exactly uh, what cuts are, are being proposed, but it being $1.2 million, talk about that marketing. Sure, and I also have our uh, VP for Marketing and Communications Great. who is here. So there are two components to our marketing. One is to do the brand support for the county across the board, to change image, to change attitude, to um, directly and indirectly attract talent to move here, businesses to come here. So that's the broader based, quote, brand advertising, most of which is, some of which is supported by television. The other half of the bucket or other two thirds of the bucket are to specifically focus on industries so that we can hone in on life sciences or hone in on corporate hospitality or hone in on the specific industries that are most important. Or I think it is in there, the breakdown to how we better communicate to businesses uh, in underserved communities through the vehicles that they are more likely to respond to. So uh, I think it is in the budget that you receive, but we have a breakdown for how much goes into the Washington Informer or the Afro newspaper or into the Hispanic media publications there are two, or into the uh, blade for LGBTQ. All of that is there. I think the only thing, um, Council Member Glass, that may or may not be there is the comparison, uh, what we've requested to this year, but what we've requested for FY25 is basically what we're actually spending for FY24. And if it's not in the budget, we'll just send you the comparison and show you where it has grown. It has grown from FY23, and so that's where you've seen almost all of the growth in our budget. It is in marketing. And if we have to 
work with that and break down what will we deprioritize, we can very easily do that, but not to the tune of even a million, much less $2 million. And we would be happy to work with uh, not just ourselves, but even talking with the council and our counterparts in county government in terms of what we collectively believe are the things that will get the most bang for our buck to support our overall economic development um, strategy. So let me take, I appreciate that. Let me, let me take it one, one level deeper. Uh, in the marketing strategy, what is the balance between marketing within the region marketing and marketing outside the region and even potentially international? So would you like a bigger budget? Because there's very little that is tied to marketing outside of the region because of the cost. But in our FY25 budget, I believe it's, uh, is it 300? It's about $300,000 $300, outside of this market to go to actually three markets, Boston, uh, Silicon Valley, and the third is the Research Triangle, I believe. Yes, because that's a combination. Our competitors in the bio life sciences it's, sector. It, and technology, by and the technology. way. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that's an area that we historically did not do because we didn't think that you need a lot of dollars to make that happen. Now, that's not all about TV. You can do a lot with social media, with, uh, and that's one of the things we want to expand. We, other than the support that we have around the economic development missions to different uh, countries, there's not a marketing budget except for what supports those in terms of media, materials, advertising at the time. So in reality, uh, we would e need to either expand that over time or reallocate if that becomes a higher priority. Understood. And, and I think it's important that you, you shared that because, again, that, that informs your strategy, where you are uh, placing your strategic communication dollars, and it sounds like what you just said is most of it is in the DMV. That is correct. And the strategy for that would be what? To retain? It's to expand and retain. Part of that is also attraction because within this region, we just had a business, uh, we were talking about it this morning, that just moved from the district to Montgomery County. We had one uh, that moved from, there is a lot of movement within the region. And so it's important that people who are here who either want to stay or move across the border, it's not all one way. We have people actually coming across the bridge here. So that's why the focus here uh, of the marketing dollars is primarily in this market. But you guess your best returns in terms of traditional economic development on the retention and expansion end. And retention means they're here. Expansion means you want them to grow here. Thank you. Um, let me turn it over to the executive team. Mr. Hartman, can you share why the county executive proposed $3.1 million less than what MCEDC requested? Thank you so much, Councilmember Glass. I appreciate the question. Um, and uh, let, let me uh, say that, that, that um, we do have an agreement on uh, the need for a well-defined core mission uh, for MCEDC. Um, uh, we, we do know that, um, uh, that it, it is, um, we ask the same questions you've asked and we've had conversations in the past about, about are we getting the correct bang for the buck? Um, are, we, are we seeing a return on our investment in, in MCDC? And it's a work in progress. Um, uh, we, the county executive um, doesn't see this discussion as binary with the discussion on the incubator, so I'm glad that, that we talked about that. Um, and um, we are cognizant that we're not alone as a county that has split functions between county government and an independent economic development authority. But what, what, is, what, what has been difficult for the executive to gauge, and this is a conversation he wants to continue into the new year as we talk to MCEDC about their annual agreement or the metrics by which we, 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 we gauge whether our money is, is seeing results. Um, uh, such as looking for data on the number of new businesses directly sourced by MCDC, and the nature and the, the success of uh, the points of contact with our prospects. We know that across the nation and even in the world, there are, there are um, uh, strategic industry conferences and, 
and trade shows, and do we have a presence there, and what is the impact and results of our presence there? What are we providing? Who are we um, um, identifying? Who are we following up with from those events? Um, are we looking proactively at companies with a footprint of more than 2,500 square feet whose leases might be expiring in two to three years? And what is the nature of and quality of and results of those contacts? Um, we're also um, looking for those metrics on marketing. Are, uh, what, are we achieving what we need to achieve in the attraction and retention um, through the, the money spent? Is TV the answer? Is, is social media, internet targeted uh, trade um, 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 uh, opportunities? Are, are, what is the expenditure of each of those and what are the results we're seeing? Um, and these are all things we're, we, we want to work with them before we can commit to a, a larger investment than what the county executive has put forward. We, we know that in the first half of this year, we've been invoiced for $1.65 million for personnel. Um, so if, they, if we finish the year, um, that's a, that, that's a, a $3.3 million expenditure on personnel at MCDC. So we, we, we need, before the county executive is confident in, in increasing our investment, we need to be confident in the results we're seeing for the expenditures. From your perspective, what are the areas of overlap? Where is there redundancy of effort, if, if you see any? Uh, as I mentioned earlier in my, my comments, that we, we have a very effective and successful business center that um, is the lead for small business outreach. They go door to door. They, um, I do have to say there's, there is a great relationship um, that we get a warm handoff from MCDC because at the end of the day, we should have a no wrong door policy. Someone calls MCDC with a small business that's having problems with, say, permitting or parking planning, uh, that uh, they get a handoff and uh, there's follow up and we can see through our CRM system how quickly that was resolved and what the, what the result was. So that's one. The, the uh, minority female disabled outreach um, is another um, and the innovation ecosystem. Um, I, we, we, we uh, through Ms. Costello, have, um, have done a great job with attracting the Maryland Tech Council with the Henry Jackson Foundation. Um, she is involved in, in many of our, um, our, our contacts with prospects. Um, and of course, as you know, uh, at the end of the day, the business center and finance um, manage the details of programs like the MOVE program or, or um, expenditures from the EDF. Um, we have a, a, a big responsibility for the follow-up and the, um, with, with folks who are receiving grant funding from us um, and whether or not they hit the targets, um, what the nature of the agreement is going to look like. So there, the, the, in nowhere in this budget is there an intent to say that there's a wall, MCDC is behind it. What we're saying is that there, the, the leads need to be more clear than they are today on the different functions. Um, and um, the county executive believes that this, this amount of funding is sufficient to begin that conversation in, in the new year to, to focus around those three major areas that we've all been talking about for a while. Uh, thank you, uh, and also want to extend my appreciation uh, for the work of Ms. Costello and, and Mr. Smith. We'll get to that in a bit, uh, but I do agree, uh, as I noted earlier, I absolutely want to separate this conversation from the incubators, and so I'm focused solely on MCEDC. And the details that you just provided, Mr. Hartman, um, are so incredibly important to this conversation to dive deeper into those areas of overlap and who does what within county government and within our uh, quasi-government agencies. But we are just simply unable to do that deep dive right here and right now on the first item of four during a three-hour work session on the budget. And so uh, I know colleagues still have more, more comments uh, on this particular item, but I'll share my thoughts of where I <laughs> would like to end up. Uh, generally, I would like to, uh, I, I will move at a point later that we add more funds to restore to some level MCEDC 
for this next fiscal year and take the fiscal year to do this work that should have been done in advance of this important conversation. I don't diminish the county executive's interest or right to have this conversation. I think we all need to have this conversation, and we have for the last uh, year and three or four months. Um, but forcing it into this time frame uh, during this budget is not conducive, and I don't think serves <laughs> any of us well. Um, so I'll hold off on that motion so that other colleagues speak. Thank you. Council Member Sim. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you, everyone. Um, I'm just sitting back and trying to gather my thoughts um, because I cannot help but wonder how our neighbors perceive us at this moment um, or even how our businesses feel. I'm really disappointed in what we are seeing in this meeting this close to the end of the fiscal year. Um, I'm trying to understand our county's lack of foresight in fulfilling our economy's mission and vision. We created this committee to focus solely on growing our economy, leveraging the resources and assets of Montgomery County to attract and retain businesses. And I think it's irresponsible for the county executive to present budget cuts this late in the fiscal year um, with very loosely based arguments to justify significant cuts um, without tangible numbers um, at this late stage. And so I'm looking at the FY24 strategic plan that the Economic Development uh, Corporation put forth. And I'm looking at the work plan and the goals that were um, made against the budget. I see 51.5% of the budget was committed to focus on job creation and retention. And I'm seeing information from 2017, but I don't know what's happened in the last year with regards to that amount of money. I see for the marketing budget, 773,000, 12% of the budget. I don't see any information about the return on investment for this information. So I'm trying to understand why we have a strategic plan and how uh, the Economic Development Corporation's work plan is guiding the evaluation of our tracking our indicators, the trends, and other reporting against the strategic plan that we were provided with at the start of this year. Um, so if you can just speak to that, that would be helpful. Uh, sure. Actually, <laughs> we review that on a quarterly basis. And from a communications point of view, we need to do a better job because we go into a lot of detail every quarter when we do our quarterly report that goes to the county executive about uh, what the status of our work plan and how money was spent against those goals. And so far, with uh, the exception of maybe one or two projects, we are on plan to achieve the goals. The work plan is also reviewed and presented to the county executive. Uh, and in fact, before it was presented to our board, uh, it is reviewed every year. And uh, I would also say that every year we sit down, because our contract is redone every single year, mm -hmm. we sit down with the county executive's office and go through item by item what we are expected to do. It is a very complex contract uh, in terms of the measurements, what we are asked to do, what we are expected to do, the reports, and so forth. So I look forward to doing this again is a tough process, but in terms of the return on investment, we have added a summary of the returns um, in the packet that you've received for this year. Uh, we typically do it at the end of the year, the end of the fiscal year, mm -hmm. but every quarter we go through this, through this and provide that information, so. And I'm, I'm glad mm -hmm. you mentioned that quarterly check-in with the county executive. 
So from the county executive side, you receive a report every quarter about the progress MCDC is making against its strategic plan. What information have you provided MCDC? What feedback have you provided based on those quarterly reports? And why are we only receiving a recommendation now? So you've had three opportunities to follow up, make recommendations, give feedback. Where is that information on those quarterly reports you've received? Thank you so much, uh, Councilmember Sales, uh, for that question. And um, I, when I took this position in, in, in March, I was very uh, grateful to have received a transition memo from my predecessor, Jake Weissman. Okay. Who, who, who detailed his contacts with um, MCDC about a number of, of things, including the issues we're talking about today, about getting more transparency, more data. Um, and that's, that's been something we've, we've provided feedback on uh, and will continue to work on as we move forward. But the, um, the, the clarity um, is, is something we continue to work on, receiving that information. Um, and that's that's a that's something we we need to change in moving forward. It's certainly something that uh, we we feel that that it is not as transparent as it could be, um, and it's it's hard for us to to gauge that return on investment. And um, and in, at least in the in the conversations I, I've had with Jake, uh, those are things that that we we worked on, we've discussed with um, MCDC. Um, Leadership um, and continue to, uh, to to need to provide additional information. We we did as we were putting together this budget did you know receive the uh, a detail because um, we had asked for a detail of of the positions by program area. Um, first time the county had received this and it was very helpful, um, uh, and that came with all the job descriptions in MCDC. So um, uh, th that sort of fine grained detail. Um, continues to need to be developed and the next step is then with, with the metrics that we need to establish for this activity um, that will help us be able, able to better judge and help them and their board be able to judge how the organization is structured and staffed um, so um, uh, Jean uh, Judy anything you'd like to add to that point yeah I mean that doesn't clarify why communication hasn't been provided in the first quarter, the second quarter, or the third quarter since before you were there. So before you were there, what communication has the county executive provided to NCDC to clarify what information they needed to better evaluate their progress? The county, Jake's been gone for right. quite some time. I understand. And, and yeah. I, 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 do know the county executive, the chief administrative officer, um, myself, um, and before me, Jake, had, have had um, a number of conversations with MCDC about sharpening the, the, the information we get back on activities. Okay. I don't think making a decision or a request in the fourth quarter makes any sense. This should have been tracked and monitored and evaluated along the way so we could better understand what exactly um, the Economic Development Corporation needed to be doing with their um, budget moving forward. Um, I, I think at this time I cannot support this, this cut, and I think the same quarterly discussions that are being provided with this report, we need to continue having these as our committee moving forward um, and just had one other question about the cuts and what they will be focusing on um, I was hoping you could um, respond or share more about uh, the executives belief about MCD not fulfilling the function regarding direct business technical support and educational programming. What is that based on? That sounds as if you're referencing um, the innovation sector, correct? So um, 
I think as Mr. Hartman said, there, that's an air, one of the areas where there's some gray area and fuzziness on, um, on the overlap of responsibilities. But in terms of technical assistance and programming support, and I have the pleasure of working with many people at MCEDC regularly, but technical assistance, how do you take a cybersecurity auth two-factor authentication idea and get that thing th through proprietary intellectual property protection, get it funded, find the distributors, but that type of detailed support, neither the county nor MCEDC do directly. So that's the type of technical assistance. That's just, it's not anything that is done. It is something that the market demands, that our businesses demand. If, is that the, I think I'm answering your question. Well, I'm just wondering how we evaluated that this, this entity is, that doesn't exist can, is better positioned to provide this function. So we, so I, I should say the, combination of things. One, meeting with incubator, our current incubator tenants who have asked us for everything. We have one uh, who anytime I walk into the Rockville Innovation Center is asking me for more medical device technology resources. Uh, he wants to network with peers. He wants to get FDA and technical assistance in there more regularly. He wants to have something like the launch port facility up in Baltimore. So, so input directly from tenants, input directly from prospects. The reason I mentioned the, I, we mentioned the international um, uh, per, travel and re the relevant part of that isn't the travel, it's the prospect recruiting. As some of you may have heard, we, we went to Taiwan last year. Mr. Glass was with us in India. And as a result of our India trip, we had 18 companies with whom we met in India who applied for a global gateway grant offered by the state to come to our incubators. And we have been meeting with them, as with other economic development projects. They, it takes months. They, mm -hmm. they, they aren't and ready. So, are you having these conversations in silos, or are you communicating this need to MCDC? Well, MCDC is aware of the prospects. In fact, uh, they're they're. Well, no, the need for the infrastructure to support these entities that want to move here. So, if it's at the small business and innovation infrastructure. My understanding, I, from the county per, uh, executive's perspective, is that that role should reside within the county executive. So, so they, we have conversations where I think our colleagues, I see business development people in the back who, who can probably also attest to the need for funding and resources. So yes, it's been communicated, but I don't think it's been communicated to to them that it is their role, and that's a policy decision. My, I just. I, I work for for someone who believes that that role, those, that support, and the innovation centers that currently are within the business center at the county, that that's where they should reside. So therefore, that's where that support would be provided. If, if I may, just for clarification, um, I think you said that that level of technical assistance is not provided by us or the county at this point. So I'm inferring that that's something that you want to do but that is not something that is being transferred from MCEDC because we are not doing that. Uh, the innovation, uh, yes, is a shared responsibility, but uh, in terms of transferring it, uh, there are a lot of needs in this county, but that is not currently something that we or the county are doing. It is a good thing. And so if you want to grow budgets, that's great, but you can't take it away from someplace where it doesn't exist. Yeah, I, th I think over the next year we're going to have to have a talk about responsibilities and ownership of the different aspects of our economy, but now during the budget season is not the time to have this discussion. And I think we need to continue a same services budget and over the next year evaluate how best to move forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, might, looking, I, might I just comment? Because you again, just came a second. I'm looking at the okay, time, sorry. Kevin, and I we have three other items, and we need yeah. to finish. So I think it was a great discussion, and I sense from the committees that we want to restore funding from MCEDC. I sense from the committee that we also want to be uh, persistent with other options we have taken, at least from last year, of, of the 3% increase uh, to our nonprofits and, and contractors. 
Um, and I also sense from the committee that we really need to have um, another work session in the future talking about, um, and we have done, then we have done re retention and, and attraction and marketing, but now we also need to know how we can, and I know you, I know you both work in sync and you both collaborate a lot, and I think that's the spirit that we need to man continue in Montgomery County. We really wanted to do great things as a whole, and I don't think one agency is competing with the government at all. I think everybody has different functions, and we just want to make sure that we are coordinated to move forward. So if, if that's, if I'm correct, that we want to um, restore MCDC um, for $1.8 uh, million for the FY25 plus the 3%, I would like to, uh, Mr. Balot to please Sure. Comment. Just to clarify, it would actually be 1.95 million. 9 million. So yes. the uh, FY24 was 5.95 million, and a 3% inflationary adjustment yes. would be 178,500. So the total approved amount, depending on how the inflationary adjustment is de de um, dealt with on the new and enhanced oh, yeah. programs, this would be 6.128 million. So basically, we what we're doing because we need to take the county the county executive recommendation plus adding this into the, I was going to say reconciliation list. Uh, new, now yes. it's called the New Enhanced Programs. Yes, the list. The list. The list. The list. The, the, list. the, list. the same thing, different name, guys. Uh, the list. 1.95 million would go uh, for the MCEDC increase above the executive exactly. recommendation and then 3% for all nonprofits is its own item. In contractors. Okay, yes. beautiful. Is that an agreement from this committee for item number one? We have three other ones to go. Um, is, oh, so, so given the parameters that we're operating in this budget, um, I support restoring, right, making a recommendation to restore with the 3% inflation, just thinking through the math of the body as we are at this uh, early point in time, uh, I, uh, I welcome conversation about whether it is one uh, figure of one point what was that, Mr. Bala? 1.8? 1.95 million. 1.95, we're splitting it into two if that is, yeah, uh, two or three? I would say, yeah. I, I'm okay. I'm okay with three trenches, to be honest, but if, if you all want to do two, I'm going to live with it. But in my opinion, it should be three trenches of what, uh, 700 or so? You mean just uh, doing one third as part of the budget and then? So, so that 1.9 yep. figure, um, dividing it into three and adding okay. it as three separate items worthy of consideration. Uh, okay. Because, because sure. what, I, what I think is sure. important is uh, we all, the four of us, have shared our thoughts. There are other colleagues, seven others, who might have different thoughts and might be more amenable at this time yeah. to shifting some of that funding. And so this provides us with uh, internal options as well. Yeah. Yep, agree. understood. So three? I'm okay with three. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do three. Uh, Council Member Balcom, and let's, let's be straight to the point, guys, because we're looking at the clock. I'm, I just want to just, for, for people in the audience and people watching at home, they, you know, this is our first discussion, discussion about tranches. So, Evan, I don't know if you want to, Council Member Glass, explain the decision process with tranches or... So, yeah. so um, let, let me take a step back and say one of the, at the two weeks ago, this council... Uh, voted to try to reduce $20 million in the $7.1 billion operating budget. That was the first non-binding decision that this body made. Uh, and so as we work through this budget, uh, there is a goal to try and reduce some funding and finding savings. And so uh, by offering funding in different tranche levels and uh, it provides options for those who might not want to support MCEDC at all uh, or those who want to return uh, to fully fund it. And so those are uh, internal deliberations uh, that will uh, occur throughout this process, but I think this this sets us up and thank you Councilmember Balcom for lifting the veil. Beautiful. With that, um, so we're in agreement, three trenches. Thank you so much. Okay, so perfect. Well, we're going to move on. We're going to go back to the incubators. To me, don't move just yet, just in case you have questions. So just, just relax. Um, on the incubators, I am 100% in with the effort and the idea. And I have said this in the past, but 
This committee has done already two field trips. The third one will be the incubators. Frederick County is doing amazing things with incubators, and we're going to go check them out. Um, and um, so basically, I do think, and just going to put it out there, I do accept the county executive's recommendation to increase the 1.8 million in operating and the 3 million in capital expenses for the incubator. Um, how does the rest of the committee feel? If you have questions, please do ask them now. Yeah. You want to go? Council on? member Glass. Great. And then you, uh, sales, and then we'll finish with Balcom. Great. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I, I held off on any conversation on the incubator yes. until now, so, so appreciate this uh, uh, engagement. Uh, Ms., uh, Ms. Costello, you, uh, you were referencing uh, trips overseas and seeing what worked, and, and I want to just build upon that. Um, and thank you for your leadership in helping educate and inform the world about the incredible opportunities that we have here in Montgomery County. Uh, and on that uh, trip, I went with you. Um, MCEDC was there, Mr. Tompkins was there, uh, as well as members of the board and members of, of both the India and Vietnamese diaspora when we went to those two places. The, uh, you, you also mentioned T-Hub, which was in Hyderabad, and it was absolutely incredible. Um, this beautiful modern structure that was buzzing with activity and is, I believe, a, a, a government project, a state project, uh, recognizing their government operates a little differently than we do here. Um, and when we said we were proud to come from Montgomery County with 1.1 million people, um, we got stares, right? Uh, said in India. Uh, but uh, I digress. But we, we saw hubs, uh, we, we saw these incubators in Hyderabad, in Bangalore, in Mumbai. They were a mix of academic institutions, government supported institutions, and I, I understand why there's interest in expanding more here. I, I get it. Uh, and recognizing also that the other life science hubs, technology hubs in the country um, have these incubators that are more closely tied to academic institutions, whether it's in the Boston area, the Bay Area, or the Research Triangle in, in North Carolina. And we, we lack, in Montgomery County, that type of academic institution. Um, not speaking um, poorly about what we have, but they're not at the same caliber. Those are four-year masters, PhD, and beyond. Um, and so we need to step in. We need to figure something out to, to support them. And, um, and, and Ms. Costello, I'll ask you to kind of expand a little bit more about, uh, about what the vision for them is. Sure. So, um, by the way, of course, you're absolutely correct in terms of the um, many other innovation hubs, including up in Baltimore and Boston, that have academic research institutions tied to them. That is one of the reasons that we formed the partnership with the Henry Jackson Foundation, world's Lord, uh, like one of the country's leading military research institute. We also, though this, um, we also are, have talked with UM3, the Institute for Health Computing, of which you are aware, and we are working to support to develop an AI innovation center co-located with them in the Pike District. So we've had high-level discussions with their top leadership. This hasn't been formed, that's why I paused for a second. But as that is where our thinking is, where we have research, nonprofit or, or university research expertise, let's leverage that and make that part of our expanded Montgomery County Accelerator Network. Not only our three county-owned facilities, but those are two examples. And then I mentioned before, there is a private sector uh, innovation uh, center that many of you may know in Twinbrook. There are people in Council Member Balcom's district who have larger incubator space, and I've spoken with those landlords about incorporating them. So that, that kind of gives you a piece of this expanded network. Then what do we do? We, we co-brand, by the way, as we did with Henry Jackson, we make sure Montgomery County's name is front and center. So when you go to Hyderabad or you go to Frederick or Boston, people know where we are and that these, this is where they can find the resources. 
Then we add the resources that I referenced earlier. There are many people willing to give consulting services, some for free, like the Maryland Tech Council's Venture Mentor Services, some paid, whether it's BHI or many ALDO groups that are known nationally on other technologies, FedTech, the Cambridge Innovation Center. T-Hub itself has services. By the way, T-Hub would like to partner with us, and we're probably going to form a cross-partnership. But now they have something, as you may recall, I think it was 40 entrepreneurs and residents on staff providing technical assistance. We have no one on staff. So we're trying to make our services more robust so that if we have a partnership, it's actually delivering the services that, we would, that they would want us to provide for their tenants. A good overview. Um, the other question I have is just about the history of the county doing this type of work, uh, which has been a little spotty, to say the least, over the last decade as we've shifted uh, incubator focuses. Uh, can you share with us why this would be different? Me? So, sorry, I heard. <laughs> so, um, so. There, I'm just thinking how far back do I want to go. I actually sat in the former Shady Grove uh, incubator as a, when I worked for the state, the innovation center that's now NCCOE. At that time, that innovation center was full. It was managed by the county. He had new, uh, the, the team there had more, more people and more support, and they leveraged programming from the colleges and the universities, and it was just a more vibrant network. Um, uh, mid-2000s, when I was at BHI, I uh, executed on a contract to help biotech companies at GIC, at the Germantown Innovation Center and Rockville Innovation Center, and went up there and visited weekly. And was, because of my day job, new entrepreneurs and mentors and venture capitalists and angel funders who I could connect with them directly. After that time, as you know, the, the county, I think, engaged uh, two different firms to provide assistance. And in each case, I think, um, there was n it was at a local ad hoc level, not someone who could address a variety of sectors in a robust way. It was, it was almost uh, creating something new instead of leveraging people who do this around the country and the world, leveraging their expertise for efficiency in their networks, and that's what our plan is. It's also recognizing that if we had a staff of 10, or you referenced T-Hub, where again, I think they had 80 staff and 400 startups. In Philadelphia and Boston, the county executive has visited a couple facilities with at least a dozen staff working with, working with the tenants every day. We just don't have that capacity, and we, we want to be able to pay technical experts what they want to be paid. There are a lot of reasons why a third party makes sense. I think I wasn't here, but I will be here three years uh, this Friday, actually. So I wasn't here in prior, um, uh, prior decision making, but my sense is that the county executive, uh, this is a priority for him because he recognizes that we need to diversify our county's economy, and he recognizes that technology innovators solve problems that the market wants, that leads to job growth, and that's, that's his priority. And it, l last question uh, is just regarding the location. Uh, you know, we, we know that not all previous iterations of incubators have worked in all locations. What is the consideration uh, moving forward? Well, thank you. Gene Smith, um, business center manager. Um, the consideration will be the three facilities we currently have in addition to the, the other ones that Ms. Cattell has shared in terms of the broader um, partnership with, other, with others. I mean, should the county want to pursue additional locations that would require additional capital investment for those buildings, those facilities? So currently the fiscal 25 recommendation is to enhance the three facilities we have in Germantown, Rockville, and Silver Spring in addition to the, the partnerships that Ms. Cattell shared. Okay. Helpful. Thank you. I yield back. Yes, thank you. Um, so who made the estimates for the uh, 3 million CIP improvements? Uh, thank you. Um, so again, and um, 
Mr. Lee mentioned this at the beginning. It's it's total of four million in expenditures. Mm -hmm. There's three million in general fund that Mr. Elrich recommended through the the FEMA reimbursements, and there's another million that's funded for state aid. So, um, just want to reiterate, it's a four million dollar investment. Um, the investment is based on conversations with again many of the third party operators that are doing this in terms of looking at our facilities. And so, I'll just highlight three million is to look at Germantown, um, as it's noted in the packet. Um, the reality is, as much as we have small wet lab space that Ms. Casella mentioned, the market has moved even smaller. It's moving to benches. It's moving to benches and individual benches that entrepreneurs can come in and have shared equipment. And so Germantown will continue to have small wet lab space on one side. Um, there is continued to be a, a high amount of vacancy of office space and obsolete office space on the other side of the building. Um, we're looking to, to work with a third party operator to upgrade that into bench space based on the current market. 500,000 is for Rockville Innovation Center. Um, some of you may have been there and seen it, but the, back when um, BioHealth Innovation was helping, the, working with the county, um, they provided a, a relevant health accelerator, which is a very large open space. Um, many businesses come, especially the ones from international trips, that look at that space and say, this looks like great co-working space, except it has all the outlets on the outside of the walls. It doesn't have a, a good division. And so the $500,000 investment will make that space a better co-working space for all of these international soft landings as well as other co-working. Um, and then the 500000 is for the broader branding and updating across the three centers in order to, to kind of be, as, as Ms. Casella um, and Council Member Glass have been mentioning, for THEB, refreshing them and making them technology current um, as well as a space that looks beyond just what you would see in a county facility. And can you share more about how, um, you know, uh, Council Member Glass mentioned the press conference we had yesterday regarding the MOVE program? Um, have you considered how the incubator, incubator investments um, can leverage initiatives like the MOVE program? Sure. And in, in fact, currently the MOVE program is available to our incubator graduates. Mm -hmm. um, so businesses that come into the incubators okay. currently are. Um, just be frank, the county does not earn money on these incubators. Currently, we are yeah. subsidizing these incubators. And so because mm -hmm. the there's already a public benefit, we don't provide a move grant to businesses that locate as tenants. But once they graduate once and look for graduate. office space, we make that well known. MCDC makes that well known. Um, and several of our incubator graduates have received that. And so, um, yes, it's very grateful for the Economic Development Committee introducing that legislation and, and codifying that. Um, and we would continue to leverage that for our graduates to keep them here in Montgomery County so they don't look to other places. Okay, good. And are you able to um, share any information about how the Innovation Center and the Innovation Manager will um, integrate RESJ into their work plan? Sure. Well, we have let um, in our discussions to get estimates that, again, I don't want to name different people per, to preclude them. I don't want to preclude them from applying for an RFP, but they know that uh, equity is a priority for the county. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at that and also we are, they know that it is important in terms of um, the diversity of the tenants who will be served by both uh, residing in an innovation center, mm -hmm. but also through some of the programming that we are talking about. And as we are looking and ta having early discussions with facilities about being part of this network, we also have had high level discussions with other providers who you all know, the Maryland Women's Business Center, the Black Collective. We would anticipate that they would be under an umbrella brand mm -hmm. to give more access. Some of those businesses served by some of the groups I just mentioned are not technology businesses, and they, may, they won't be helped by a federal technology accelerator. But things about how to start your business 101, which the business center already does, how to market, some of those things are helpful for businesses no matter your stage and status, and we would expect to more proactively involved historically underrepresented communities in those initiatives. I, I totally agree with Montgomery County being home to four of the most diverse cities in the country um, to not even reference RESJ in this innovation section is a bit concerning. So I unless I miss something, but I yeah, see 14 yeah. pages and no reference. For, so maybe in, you mean in your document, it's actually unless it was Delita, that um, measuring DEI was in our was in the PowerPoint that I proposed, but I don't know if it. 
but uh, it is definitely in the larger uh, outline, which I'm happy to share with you. Okay, thank um, you. Because it is very important. Okay, and my last question, you referenced 15 million to 156 businesses in the last fiscal year. It's on page 14 of the packet. Can you highlight some of your outreach work to connect businesses with resources to access capital and any demographics of the companies that received this $15 million? Uh, if I may, um, Committee Member, the, the attachment at the back is for the business center in total, which manages the incubator's NDA, because they don't have their own individual report, so I think it might be a broader scope, just to provide some clarity there. Well, I'm looking at this message from the County Executive Elrich's report, and it references, as I mentioned on page 14, that more than 15 million to 156 businesses in, well, this is 2023, so I don't even know what happened in 2024, loans through resource partners. And so I'm just wondering how these 156 businesses were identified and if we have any information for 2024. It's circle number eight in the packet. Just oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And so, yeah, um, Mr. Lee is correct. So the, the business center includes multiple functions beyond just the incubators. We're here talking about the incubators, not the yeah. account today. So that is related to our contracted resource partners through the Latino Economic Development Center, the Maryland Small Business Development Center. And so those, that is funding that they provide to the businesses that the county um, ref, uh, refers businesses to those if they're looking for resources and their selection process is, is done um, through that. I should, I've, um, Failed to mention also includes life assets, which provides like really micro loans, and so um, those fifteen that fifteen um, that money is referring to all the businesses that um, received funding through referrals from the county to get, receive loans um, through those organizations, and it's not related purely to the incubator discussion. But it's in the incubator packet, so that's why I'm asking about it. And so if it's in the packet, I'm I'm trying to understand. I understand, yeah. and again, uh, the business center includes multiple functions, which includes our business liaison, small mm -hmm. business navigator, our economic development manager, and our program managers, which I'll take the moment to recognize Mr. Cisneros, who helps manage um, our incubators, and we also have another staff who's on maternity leave, um, Alicia Chavez, and so I'll take a moment uh, of personal privilege just to recognize them and their great work. Um, the business center, per the um, how, how I'm asked to do the work from the county executive and from Ms. Casello is to provide a full report of all of our work in last year, okay. the annual report for the business center. And so, mm -hmm. yes, Mr. Ali attached it to the packet, um, but again, I want to recognize that that is the business center's work, which isn't purely the incubators. Oh, okay, okay. So next week I will ask a question about the and demographics of <laughs> We will be ready. The, and then <laughs> I would want updated information for 2024 since this references information from 2023. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Council Member Balkan to say her questions and remarks, and um, just a reminder to go back to page six where the staff recommendation is given for the incubators. Yeah. So. Thank you, um, and, and uh, thank you f uh, for the incubator, the team that works very hard. I was uh, in, my, in my past life, I was on part of the Tenant Review Committee for many years, and so I'm very familiar with um, the the incubators the the pro the innovation centers uh, try to make that change so just a couple things um, I think Ms Costello mentioned it uh, very early on that this is more than a real estate play right um, and it, it's so much more than just the the space so um, I I think that this is really important and I think that. Um, uh, just like um, everything else in our lives, you know, the, the uh, pandemic, um, it was difficult to have that level of programming. And, and I think that uh, I'm very supportive of additional programming. And I think that, that we need to look at that, at that place, that point. From the capital improvement perspective, um, we, so much has changed in terms of the actual physical work environment. Uh, not only in lab space, but just in office space in general. And so I think that 
if if we are committed to innovation centers and the entrepreneur incubator process, uh, we have to in, increase our um, our facility, make sure that our facility is top notch. Um, so I support that perspective. Um, I do I do have just uh, one question about the um, the the new um, process, the new program. So uh, this would be an RFP. What is the timing of that? And and I understand that this, I'm assuming that the request is an annualized request. So how quickly can we get this, uh, this con contract and how quickly can we do these uh, services based on, you know, the budget starts J July 1, what is the time lag before we get the services in there? So thank you for, for that question. The county executive has authorized us, that means Gene and team, uh, and, and I to move forward if, this, if funds were appropriated as soon as possible with the drafting of contract vehicles, which we expect to be an RFP. We've talked with many different providers. There's one, there are one or two who say they might be unique in everything they do, but uh, what the odds of whatever the contract vehicle is, we're mandated by by the county executive's request to have documents ready to go start through procurement on July 1st. So with that, um, we will be doing everything that we can do in EOB to expedite that procurement process. I can tell you that the operators and providers we've spoken to particularly after I reached out to them, they're calling every week. I've said no decisions. They're ready to go as soon as they know that there is funding. So it's as quick as, quickly as we can get through that procurement process. And our hope is that uh, more robust programming, which will start from, from nothing to something, and we hope gain traction, would get, st the procurement process would be through and they would be able to get started before the end of the year. I'd love for it to be in September. I don't know, given the process, if that's realistic. Similarly, for the, um, the some of the uh, capital funds that you referenced, uh, the people we have spoken with are willing, as soon as they have dollars, to, to start to do the visit I referenced, the facility assessment, the starting to hire someone to be, a, which would be a transition uh, period of transition from our current operators to true globally recognized mm -hmm. operators, and we would hope, um, and then and then they also will uh, uh, make specific advice on the building enhancements and any further ad advice as soon as they can do that. Realistically, as we think through this, we're probably talking Q1 or Q2, but the hope is that mm -hmm. all of this would be implemented with, before within the next fiscal year. Okay. And it, and the full 1.8 would be used in FY25? Yes, because we would start with the technology, we would start with the programming and the technology assessment and support as soon as we can in, we can sign a contract with those providers. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the the thing that would take the lar the longest period of time would be actual um, renovation at the building IT level and uh, full transition of the current team and dollars to the next dollars, but based on the conversations we had when we were gathering estimates, again, people are, uh, the potential vendors are willing to start that process, and, and they, so I'm accounting for, as has been referenced earlier, a couple months to hire, people, you know, procurement process, a couple months to hire people, then the assessment and stuff, so you get up to Q, Q4 of FY25. Okay, thanks. And then uh, last question. The um, the contract for assistance and assessment of the uh, existing companies, is that the same contractor as the tr uh, training um, programs or so are those two different contracts? Those were, pro so I can, so there are vendors who would like to do everything. Um, my recommendation is that they would probably be, t that they would start as two different contracts. We, we have, for example, identified people who manage facilities globally who offer programming, but we don't want to wait for them to come on board and renovate and manage those facilities. We want the programming to get started. So initially it would be two different uh, 
I expect it would be two different contracts. I would not be surprised if a year and a half or two years out, another bid is done and the, and the group actually managing the f facility, which may be different than the one doing the programming, brings that in because we've talked to people capable of doing everything. Okay. And then I, I, I said it was my last, sorry, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> the it, it, the um, metrics and outcomes, because I, I, I know, f you know, from the past we've had um, a, a, a bumpy road with some vendors, and so I think it's just so important that we, from the very beginning, we outline very specific expectations, and um, and that there is some, you know, escape route if they are not meeting these expectations. I I completely agree, yeah. and we're happy to. Um, we have a little bit of time. Happy to draft things and take council input, and and I also think as has been referenced with other discussions, frequent communication, not only with you, but with our vendor, and what and what's happening, what's working, and what's not working is also what should be done. Great, and you know us, we're very happy to share our opinion. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> well, we, had the, we had the pleasure of serving on the Tenant Review Committee yeah, um, before great. too. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, and, uh, and I also have great expectations for MCDC to be you know, also involved in a way and provide feedback. Um, as I said before, we're gonna have a trip on the incubators and I'm hoping that trip can be finalized for this summer. And then we're gonna have a session in the fall. Hopefully, you know, the, the entire council and this committee will agree with the funding, which I do, I said it before. Um, so in the fall, be ready to come back here to explain um, the work program that you're gonna have. And I, and like I said, I expect MCDC, even though this is not your role, you really need to be um, really engaged in this process. And that's why I wanted you here. Um, plus you were mentioning the package. Um, with that, we have, uh, if you look at page six, um, we need to approve, if, if everybody agrees, uh, the 1.95 million of the new incubators programming in the one-term limited D, uh, FTE plus the $112,000 increase in operating expenses, plus the three million CIP project to support upgrades to existing incubators as it was explained today. Um, would, is everybody in agreement? Yes. yes, take that as a yes. Thank you all for coming here today. And I'm gonna say right now it's 11.36. We're gonna have to stay here for at least another hour. Uh, for the other two items that we have on the agenda, this is our priority, if you have something else happening, I am so sorry you're going to have to postpone because you're going to stay here. You all are dismissed. Thank you so much. Um, so if we can please have the next item would be the very exciting one, the Economic Development Fund. So we need to have um, the Department of Finance here, the Business Center, OMB, and um, he, but I'll do you need a minute? Do you do? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Let's take a minute, guys. I don't, I don't want to read that chair <laughs> who doesn't give people breaks.
Welcome back. Uh, Mr. Bolo, can you please take us off? We are going to be on item three, the uh, economic, wait a minute, oh, the wrong one, the economic development fund. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is a, a long item. <laughs> um, there's a few things going on here because it's a fund that includes several programs. Um, the proposed uh, general fund ongoing funding is 3.5 four or six or 3.5 million. Um, and in the March 27th amendment, there was a one-time recommendation of seven and a half million um, that we'll talk about. Um, and personnel cost is just under $200,000 and there's one FTE that's paid out of the fund. Um, and then there's operating costs of uh, 10 million or 3.2 million, depending on uh, assuming the seven and a half million in one-time expenditures, which I'll get into. Um, there are six programs that are currently funded through the uh, through the EDF. They are the Economic Development Fund Grant and Loan Program, uh, the Microloan Program, the Biotechnology Investor Incentive Program, the Cybersecurity Investor Incentive Program, the MOVE Program, uh, and the Small Business Innovation uh, Research Matching Grant Program, or SBI, or STTR uh, Program. Um, just a quick point um, just of clarification here of the seven and a half million dollar before we get into the programming um, that's been pre-existing. Um, there is going to be on April 29th a joint GEO econ hearing on the council president's proposed jobs bill that includes 20 million dollars and three specific funds and approaches for using that um, money or really two funds, but we'll hear more about it on the 29th. And this seven and a half million uh, doesn't have a lot of details associated with it right now, but it would ostensibly be similar to, or at least in, in the same spirit of that $20 million. So it would be interesting or important to sort of understand what the overlap is there, um, uh, you know, as it's relevant in this discussion, but then also going forward on the 29th. Um, okay. so. The council, the effort, FY25, the revenues, um, the county executive is recommending tax support appropriation of $3.5 million and the one-time appropriation of $7.5 million. Um, the, the existing, the general fund amount is consistent with what was uh, proposed and approved last year, um, and activity within the fund suggests that that's the right amount given the awards um, that uh, were made and the overall balance of the fund towards the end of the fiscal year, although it is sort of close to its minimum balance that the uh, finance prefers to have, but fundamentally it's, it's right size to support the programs um, in it today. The, yeah, so then um, going, into, going forward, uh, there is a table on page four of the staff packet that just outlines all the costs. Um, the ED, just a point of clarity here, the EDF is sort of flexible, so the funds in there can really be used on any program, but these are recommended amounts or funding levels for the six. So the Economic Development Fund Grant and Loan Program, which provides the sort of biggest awards um, on an application basis, um, so they'll, they'll take in appli um, applications for that award um, and then provide that amount, and if the number exceeds $100,000, they come to the council to approve it. Um, the microloan program is actually $150,000 that goes towards two contractors that then provide those loans to, to residents and businesses in the community. Um, the biotech and cybersecurity investor programs essentially provide matching grants uh, or incentives for investors that invest in those businesses, so it goes directly to investors. Um, the MOVE program, as we know, is, as the committee is familiar with, provides a, a subsidy for a portion of the space that a business um, leases in a Class A or B building. Um, and then SBIR is also a matching program um, based on uh, a federal program that also exists. And then there's a seven and a half million, which as I mentioned, does not have any details. I think the county executive staff did provide something this morning. We would have to obviously upload that as part of the addendum and just to be comprehensive here uh, to the packet to the extent that they provided it today. Um, but we may have to revisit that um, uh, proposal with more details if the committee is interested. Um, I'll just sort of jump to the, the table on Page. I'm sorry. Let's go to my recommendations here. It's a long packet. Um, yeah. So basically, uh, the county 
there was there was a summary table, and I'm sorry that it's missing here, but effectively, council staff supports the amount that's recommended for the EDF GLP, the grant and loan program. Uh, the staff also concurs with the county executive's recommendation of $750,000 for the MOVE program, in part just based on the expected number of applicants based on historical usage of the program. Um, for the BI, the biotechnology program, the staff also recommends supporting the $125,000 that the executive has recommended for it. Um, for the cybersecurity program, uh, staff recommend zero dollars uh, compared to the one hundred thousand dollars that was recommended uh, the reason being that there weren't any awards under this program previously um, and you know the the fund is flexible so if there were any then the fund could potentially be used to to provide that award um, this uh, staff also recommends supporting the executive's recommendation of the hundred thousand uh, dollars one hundred and fifty thousand dollars for the microloan program and then um, Staff also supports reducing the allocation of the SBIR STTR program from three hundred thousand to two hundred thousand dollars. So, the net difference between what staff recommends and what the county executive is recommending is two hundred thousand dollars less. Uh, and the staff does not support uh, their one-time use of the seven and a half million for the high growth businesses fund at the moment because there are not sufficient details. But if the committee wishes, we could potentially revisit this issue as part of the budget process. Um, I hope that was clear. I'm sorry, there was supposed to be a, a table, and I can try to add it to the addendum here that sort of summarizes where staff landed. But it's um, not even on the uh, report on the website. It's not there either. Like I'm looking at the package on the um, that we see online, and I don't see it there. No, as in it's not there, yeah. as in I would have to add it um, to mm. it. I, I had it, I thought it was in here. But the point is the, the difference between staff's recommendation and the county executive is $200,000 less, $100,000 less in SBIR, STTR, $100,000 less in cybersecurity. Yeah, I see. Okay, so you're done, right? So we're going to move on to the county executive's uh, comments, but I just want to let folks know that I do think that we need to go one pro, like one by one on these programs. Um, so please provide your remarks and um, hopefully let's pay attention to s who among council members say what so we don't need to repeat. Yes. <laughs> and we can catch up with time. Uh, Mr. Uh, Herman, do you want, would you like to kick us off from the executive team? Thank you so much, uh, Chair Fanning Gonzalez. Uh, I'll, I'll kick us off. Um, I do appreciate your consideration of the Economic Development Fund budget. We have a great team um, that you'll hear from in a, in a minute. I do want to point out that we, we, we have provided information about the, the, the objectives of the Montgomery County High Growth uh, uh, Small Business Fund. Um, uh, we were asked by council staff to provide details about the process that that fund would follow, who manages what. Um, and we, we did provide that um, late, but, but the outline of the program, uh, the intent to provide access to much needed capital to start or grow businesses, provide companies with high growth potential success and grow jobs in the county, support business diversification and equity goals, and to administer that fund within the Economic Development Fund were all uh, details that we provided uh, to you. And we do look forward to that conversation in uh, about a week or so, um, two weeks. Um, uh, on on that program, but um, County Executive feels that that is that is very vital complement to the the innovation ecosystem proposals that you just heard about. But um, I'm happy to to let our our, our team uh, um, uh, and turn it to Gene. If you have any opening remarks, no, you're good. Okay, thank you. Oh. Good morning or afternoon now. My name is Dennis Hetman. I'm a finance manager uh, with the Department of Finance. Part of my portfolio is the EDF. You'll notice uh, an individual missing up here today, uh, and that is Pete McGinnity, who we dearly miss his unending knowledge of the Economic Development Fund. He has retired, uh, but we are joined by Nadia Khan, who comes from uh, to us from uh, Maryland Economic Development Corporation. With the refined knowledge of these deals, we're thrilled to have her as part of the team. Um, and just wanted to introduce her here today. Our goal with this program has always been to optimally leverage the budgeted funds for the highest possible return of investment for the county. Uh, we have discerning reviews. We do quantitative analysis um, 
plenty of metrics on tracking capital expenditure, uh, total FTEs, um, and where those funds should best be positioned to optimally leverage them with the state. It is critical for us in these budget hearings that we maintain the EDF's inherent flexibility. It's purposely structured in a way where we can be nimble and flexible if larger deals come up. That's essential for us so we can avoid the supplemental appropriation process that does very much slow things down. The EDF GLP, it passed 60 million in assistance cumulative provided since uh, it began. Uh, that is approximately 10 times the next program, uh, which is MOVE, which is just under $6 million over the same time frame. We continue to support expansion of our key economic sectors. We had three very large deals in biotechnology, um, international companies in real estate, as well as hospitality, and uh, one of which included $200 million in capital investment and 100 additional jobs. Uh, the last point with respect to cybersecurity that I know we will get to, that has been dormant since 2018. However, we have some intel from the state uh, that there is a likelihood that there will be additional investments this year. And of course, we're just, we're matching our share of that. So um, those were my opening comments and then we can take it from there with whatever you wanna do. Thank you so much yeah. uh, and welcome to your new, your new position. Um, Ms. Khan, I, like I said before, I think it's best if we go up one by one. I wonder if Council Member Glass would like to start first? Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. So first item is Economic Development Fund Grant and Loan Program. I don't know if you have a catchy or rhythmic way to say that acronym. Uh, I can't figure it out. It is not as simple as Roy G. Biv. But, um, uh, Appreciate all of you here. Appreciate teeing up the conversation in in the way that was that was just done, uh, and uh, also appreciate Mr. Ali uh, framing the conversation. There are lots of discussions in this body right now and in Rockville across the street about economic development. Clearly, we just spent nearly two hours talking about the proper role and responsibility of MCEDC vis-a-vis. -vis county government uh, and as has been noted multiple times yesterday this committee officially introduced legislation to expand the move program which is an item on our agenda today the second item uh, but first just want to keep it to uh, the, the first one um, with regard to some of the other conversations that are taking place uh, it uh, baseline question what is the process when a company applies for for assistance when they want to uh, move here or expand here. Can you open up a little bit more? Yes, it's typically sourced through uh, MCEDC uh, or our partners with the state. We meet weekly and collaboratively with them to discuss the different status um, of those, uh, sort of what they need, how we can make their life easier. We're all on the same page um, and we just want to have it as seamless a process mm -hmm. as possible. Um, and then we worked with the company to formulate the agreements uh, as to what the incentive might be, and then the terms of it, what are the employees that accompany this, what are the capital expenditure improvements. We do our own quantitative fiscal impact of what is that net to us on an annual basis. That is a little nuanced because some of these deals can actually have a negative fiscal impact to our county, but in the broader scope of the state, um, they're quite beneficial. Uh, we just completed a deal uh, on that front. Uh, but then it's it's quite a bit of meetings, getting the, the, the paperwork ready to go for the Economic Development Fund Agreement, checking all the totals, um, and then also getting the necessary approvals, both from Mr. Elrich and uh, Mr. Covey, our, our director. Um, and then we, of course, track all of the, the data internally, both um, up front and then on an ongoing basis, because they have to fill those requirements <coughs> for FTEs uh, and capital expenditure, we hold those to them if they do not. And we had a lot of these alterations in the context of COVID. We have to claw back funds. Um, and that, that can be some difficult conversations, but they, they understand the process and they've been very helpful. And we try to be as uh, just easy to work with as possible for them. Uh, 
in that, that process. Yeah. That, that's helpful. Okay. And how long does that process sometimes take? That's a great question, and it is very variable and volatile, uh, depending on the size of the company, their uh, desire to get it done. Um, there are some that are, uh, they are internationally renowned. They're not going anywhere. There are others who are newer, and uh, they may need a loan to, to get, and we adjust accordingly. So um, given the capacity that we have, some can take excess of a year. Others can come together in a matter of months. Hmm. So months to year or to to more than a year, uh, depending on where they're coming from, and and in that process, I I, I think um, I think that's helpful, right? Because uh, just like we codified the move program, while it had been a discretionary item in the budget, we are now laying uh, planting the flag and saying it will not be a discretionary item. It is built into the county code. And so as businesses want to move here or expand here, they will have a point of reference to know uh, it is not going to change. It is going to be there for them, whether it takes months or years. And those types of decisions are year-long decisions, right? Whether you're signing a three-year lease, a 10-year lease, whatever it might be um, th this day and age. And so for, for a program like this, it's incredibly important because as the businesses are thinking about growth opportunity, uh, they need that long-term planning, right? And so having it in the budget, having it be there for a longer period of time uh, is, in, is important to them and their business planning model, uh, which is why I have said uh, time and time again that when we talk about economic development and supporting our businesses, uh, it needs to be in the budget and it needs to be long-term planning opportunity. And this item uh, is first and foremost where it should be. For the mere fact, your admission, that it sometimes takes more than a year, which I'm hearing is more than a calendar year, more than a fiscal year. And that's what the budget serves, right? Absolutely. And those longer deals, uh, it's typically a function. They take longer because either the county will revise their employment numbers. So yeah. they may have given us an estimate, and then they had to pull back on that. We have to recalculate um, what those incentives should be, um, and then we work cooperatively with them. But it, particularly during COVID, there were ones that took almost a year to, to finalize. Yeah. Um, uh, again, thank you. And, and I'm, I'm looking at the packet, and it says, according to the 2023 EDF annual report, uh, there were three awards in the calendar year 2023, totaling $1.64 million, accounting for 70 jobs. And the average salary of these jobs was $131,226. That's great. So we have a program that are bringing in 70 jobs with an average salary of more than $100,000. It's a great program. Uh, what I would like to do is, uh, and, and, and let me just pause, I appreciate the proposal that has been brought to the council by the council president. And I shared that from the dais, and I've shared that uh, with, my, with my colleagues. And I also shared that it should be in the budget. Yeah. Uh, and because we have a program that does nearly the identical thing um, that is built into the budget, I would like to make a motion that we uh, increase the funding for this Economic Development Fund grant and loan program um, uh, to bring it up to $5 million, uh, in, and I would like to structure it two tranches of $1.625 million. Two tranches, 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 excuse me. Yeah, right, three times fast, of $1.625 million, bringing this fund that has shown success in metrics up to $5 million. Thank you so much for that motion. I wholeheartedly agree. I think, um, oh, let me start, Mr. Hedman. I thought, I, I appreciate your, your explanation, and I think you have, I have followed this program for a while, and I think you have a great track record, and I think it's the type of programs that we need to invest. Um, and as Council Member Glass has said, I think it's very um, prudent to really look into programs that we, um, we wanna, especially when we're saying that Montgomery County is open for business and, and we wanna really be strong partners with our business community, this is a type of program that has a track record that can actually um, send a message right away. And investing more in it is, in my view, um, the, the most responsible thing. 
Um, so I also agree with that motion. And, um, but in order to move forward, we need to have a second in discussion. I wonder if uh, I can second. Um, if anybody on the committee would like to second the motion so we can discuss. Yeah. Or accept without. Or I mean, there's Are different you? ways you can do it. It's just a committee. I'd like to uh, discuss the yes the motion to discuss it. Yes. Okay. Great. Would you like to go first? Sure. Yes. Okay. And so, um, you know, I um, you know joined the council president for the press conference to announce the jobs initiative. And I was very excited to support the initiative because, um, as was mentioned this morning, the Economic Development Corporation's um, work plan charges us with over 51% of their budget directed at creating jobs. And so as we're looking at this um, EDF GLP fund, you know, I... Um, wanted to better understand some of the metrics that were shared with um, us in this packet. Um, I'm seeing information from, it looks like 60 businesses, it was mentioned, have been helped with this fund. And I am trying to understand the a few of the metrics that were mentioned. Do we have any demographics on the 60 businesses? that have been funded with this grant? We absolutely do. They're not included in this report, but we can put that together for you. Yes, if, yeah. you, if you can, that would be helpful. And then uh, I'm looking at the contractual obligations and milestones. It looks like five have not met these contracted milestones, uh, but no repayment. Um, I guess there hasn't been a repayment um, um, request started. Um, 38 are active, so I don't know what the status of those businesses are. Um, and I'm trying to understand what the current um, of, oh, it's Circle 8. Yeah, mm -hmm. Circle 8. Yeah, so I'm I'm just trying to understand the, the what what the return on investment is. I see that in 2020 and 2021, uh, the fund was at three times the amount it currently is at now, um, and now that we are going into FY25, it's almost a third of what it used to be. And so can you just explain a bit more about some of the businesses that are um, currently still in progress with this fund and um, the businesses that haven't met the contractual obligation milestones, what we're doing regarding repayment of these loans? Certainly. Uh, that's a wonderful question. And the circle page eight, that chart is essentially a report card on, you know, are the companies keeping to what they have promised us? Mm -hmm. And we try to be as, uh, you know, give them as much leeway as possible, particularly given, um, the, granted the COVID environment has improved, but we saw a number of the hospitality companies uh, that uh, had considerable less demand, uh, but then it, it I handle the hotel revenue forecast for finance as well. That spiked considerably uh, when COVID resolved. So they, we worked with them to manage through that trough and they are now rebounding uh, considerably. So it depends on the nature of the business. There's also, of course, a very large biotechnology cohort that we deal with often that that can be contingent on drugs passing for approval or maybe falling through. There's also, there's also macroeconomic uh, factors like the interest rate environment uh, and, and housing and, and things of that nature that can shape all these deals. Some of them are a very a constellation of stars aligning and then others come together very quickly. Uh, but in terms of the companies, uh, this, this is essentially their report card to us of who did we have to reach out to to potentially bring back funds because they weren't meeting the requirements that we had set in the, the EDF agreements. 
Okay. And there's other metrics too um, on the other charts. We we like to see how much um, the jobs attracted are pretty easy to track. The private capital investment, the dollars awarded, but then we also have this leverage factor or this order of magnitude of. Um, for each dollar that we're putting up, what are we getting from the state? And you'll notice those have been improving uh, and have been really quite stellar of late. So of the $60 million that we've invested in attracting or keeping these businesses here, what can you show or point to as the return on the investment? We don't have that cumulatively, but, um, but it, it's something that could be calculated. Yeah, I think that would be helpful okay. for me before I can make a decision about growing this fund to better understand year over year what the actual return on the investment is um, for this fund. Thank you. Um, I think something very important about this fund, and one of the reasons I respect it, um, is on circle page seven, where it says EDF GLP program out outcomes. I'm going to read it, so bear with me. Grants awarded are monitored annually after funding and closed once a business achieves the contracted milestones, prepays the required penalty, or the Department of Finance, that's you, uh, forwards the case to the Office of the County Attorney for Collection. That's really important. And uh, for calendar, calendar year 2023, the county did not issue any form, form of recall notices for failure to adhere to the terms of the respective economic development fund agreements. That speaks highly of the program and your success, I believe. Just wanted to know that. Thank you. Yeah, and it's it's not theoretical. It is very tangible. Yeah, it is very metrics-based, um, and we, we in the Department of Finance take great pride in those analytics and in every it's the basis of everything we do yeah I'm seeing five that did not meet contractual obligations and 38 are still active so we're still monitoring and so I don't know where we're at with those and that's on the following page yeah yeah any more comments on that before we? It just, just that, it, not to disclose the companies, but it's a dynamic pipeline that's always changing shape, uh, and it's something that, again, what we hope to get out of th this budget process is just to give us just enough leeway uh, whereby we can be as flexible as possible um, if larger deals come up. Well, and, and if I could just add to this and bring it back to a comment that, oh, I, I apologize. Did, uh, um, just bring it back to the conversation or the, the comment that Mr. Tompkins made in a previous conversation uh, talking about Amazon and them missing their mark. This is exactly a similar situation where we make sure that we're engaged with the businesses um, and business, businesses fluctuate and we want to make sure that taxpayer funds are used properly. Council Member Welkin. Um, so thank you. And just to note that the um, 38 case the five um, cases that's over a 10-year period so that that's the oh I know but if we don't have the year-over-year -year information I don't know which year that's in and there's still 38 that are in limbo so it would be helpful if we actually had the 2024 information and not a 10-year summary okay thank you um, so just to to, to the um, uh, motion at hand. I, it's it's really difficult, and I understand um, the the complexity of having this discussion when we have um, three. Um, well, we have more than three funds, but it's difficult to have the discussion of raising this this specific fund at the same time that we're looking at the seven point five million dollars that the county executives are recommending and the 20 million dollars jobs fund and so yeah, let me just no that, that's okay I just because you'll you might want to hear this <laughs> that's okay I it's difficult for me to um, support an increase in this specific fund which I do I think that I think the fund is a great fund and I would support additional funding but we can't look at that in a vacuum, considering we have a $7.5 million recommendation from the county executive, and the same time that we have a $20 million uh, FY24 supplemental 
um, on the table at the same time. So I'm not, I'm not willing to um, support the increase in this fund without looking the, at all of these things in total. So. Uh I agree with you, which is why the only way to look at everything in total is by adding this now, so that we can act, so we can do all of that. I agree with you 110 yeah. percent. You, you yeah. can't yeah. achieve that goal without doing this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In agreement. Um, Council Member Sills, do you have a follow-up question? I want to make sure that you are you, all your questions are answered. So. Yeah, my questions are answered, but we. I feel like we just scolded the county executive for bringing us a recommendation at the ninth hour with a request for over a million dollars on a limited budget at the late hour. And so to make this recommendation from the dais without um, any information in advance, I, I don't know if we need to be making this decision on top of everything that is already before us and so uh, I appreciate that I appreciate the the dogged questions that you've asked about the uh, efficiency and efficacy of, of the project of the program uh, I view the budget process as a way to support programs that are working and on the flip side things that we don't think are working uh, we amend, and that's what the whole MCDC conversation was about. And so I see the results of this program working. There is movement within the body and across the street to support these efforts. Uh, I have personally said, I'll say it again, that when we do long-term investing, it should be long-term, which carries over beyond a fiscal year. It should be codified in the budget. And that's why I'm making this motion to increase a program that, that I think works. The questions you asked are spot on yeah. about the more than 30 yeah. uh, companies that haven't met their metrics. We can have another conversation. Uh, perhaps I you know, would even be supportive of a closed door conversation so we can have no who has not yeah. uh, met their uh, mm -hmm. obligation. But as I understand it, if they have not met their obligation, the law will come down on them and they are legally required to uh, uh, return the money. Is that correct assessment? Mm -hmm. Correct. And it's typically not the full amount. It's a portion um, that is commensurate with the number of employees they may be short or the capital investment. It's a, it's a calculation, uh, but it's typically not the full amount. And then there's still the information regarding the demographics of the businesses that have received this funding that we do not have before us. So to make a blind statement that this is working, is it working for everyone? I don't know and I can't make that decision with the information before okay. us. Thank you. Is there um, anything that you can provide about the break, demographic breakdowns for those companies who have received money in the past? When you say demographic, is that by lo location or uh, employees? Or I, I, I would say equity areas, as right. they're known in Montgomery County. Right. And if you can go even further, I'll welcome that too. So. That, you know, completely understood. Um, there are some um, just reporting requirements or issues with uh, the, you know, the confidentiality um, where we'll, we'll do everything we can uh, but it, it would be it would be a bit of a lift particularly given the number of companies but I think we can um, we can figure it out yeah are they minority female disabled veteran you know what do we know about these businesses that are receiving a significant investment to come here stay here and if they don't meet their contractual obligations we're giving back a portion so we may be taking a loss I want to know what we're investing in thank you perfect and many of the questions the questions that council member uh, sales asked and she's right on spot mm -hmm. um, are things that you know a company will be certified as a veteran business you know business or women-owned business which shouldn't be that difficult it's public information anyway so it's just collecting that and showing this uh, it will be all great if you can submit that to us in the future because it's, it's I think it's valuable information anyway. Um, with that, I'm gonna, there's a motion on the table. Um, did I hear a second from you? I, without from, objection. Without objection, I think we can move forward with this. Is that okay by the committee? Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, 
Um, I just want to say, yes, I move forward with it. But just because we're moving forward with it, I, of course, of course. Um, understand that I, I may not um, support it for, in the future. Thank you. I think that's correct. And I feel the same way as Councilmember Welcome, And I think Councilmember Sells will be on that vote, too. <laughs> uh, can we please move on, move on to the next one? Um, so the next one on the agenda is the MOVE program that we love. And I think I can say that this, is it fair to say that this committee agrees with the county executive's recommendation on the MOVE program? Would that be accurate? Yes? Yes. Yes? Okay, perfect. Um, you can note that below. Third one is the um, biotech, I'm following the, the report, okay? Here I have the biotechnology investor incentive program. If there's... Anybody have a question? I see council member uh, sales. I just have a quick question because, you know, we, we keep promoting and touting ourselves as the biotech corridor of the region. I think we're fourth. And to see that there's lack of activity in the past two calendar years, what's happening? What's going on? What, what, are, what can we point to? Yeah. Well, th this is shaped by, again, macroeconomic factors and the capital markets as well. Um, we get from the state those who should be receiving this credit uh, across the eligible companies, uh, and it has been lighter than, than normal. It has been more robust, however, than cybersecurity. Uh, there is more of a focus in biotechnology uh, than that, but there are all sorts of headwinds and tailwinds with respect to um, the drugs being approved or the different um, various different stages of research that, that each of these companies are responsible for. So we, we are in essence, a in this instance, a pass-through entity for what the state tells us we need to credit the investors. And then we do our own calculation as to what that amount is on a proportional share of what was initially budgeted. So it's not really in our purview of sort of uh, being an impetus for these companies coming through, it's more just we are passing through the funds that the state tells us that we are, that are owed. So to there's no proactiveness from the For, correct. counties in, in this In this instance, yeah, it's more we're, we're ensuring that um, those investors are getting their, when they put the money into these companies, that they're getting their match from us. And so I'm just thinking about the county's economic development corporation. Are they privy to this information that we haven't received any inquiries regarding this sector in the last year, two years, and now we have someone from the state. And so if we're not receiving it, who else in the state, what other counties are receiving these inquiries? Do we know if any other investments are made in the biotech sector in other counties Mr. across the state of Maryland? Mr. Ken Harmon, can please jump in? Thank you. I'm actually going to turn it to Gene, but I do want to, for the record, uh, Councilmember Sales, we're the third largest bio oh, hub in, in, the, in the nation. Thank you for but correcting Gene. the record, sir. Uh, sure. And, uh, and uh, Mr. Hedman mentioned this previously. So the, the way the county code works is it's based on those that are filing for the application to the state for a tax credit. And so um, certainly that does not mean that there's no investments happening in the county it just means investors are not filing necessarily with the state or have received the state tax credit so in defense of both mcdc and the county's program it, it purely is a match to what has already happened at the state and so i think we would need to work with the state to understand why investment isn't occurring or why investors are no longer applying in the same ways that they used to yes and and, and this this topic ties back to our our investments in the budget uh, for for um, the Howard, uh, the, the Henry Jackson Foundation, uh, the BioHub, um, the UM3, the the, yeah, seven, the, um, the small business high growth okay. fund. Yeah. So we're we, we're trying to help these small businesses that might be running up against the ceiling or a gap in financing to go from concept to market, um, which hopefully will 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 um, uh, prime this pump again, um, so we can see more activity and more companies moving into lease space. So it's all tied together as part of the same ecosystem. Uh, yeah, just briefly also, I think um, this is a really interesting question, I think worth examining more in detail in the summer in cooperation with our esteemed uh, consultant, Sarah Miller, and just looking at incentives around biotechnology. Yes. What's the suite of incentives that we offer? How effective are they? How can they be enhanced or whatever the case may be? So definitely an interesting discussion, I think, to take forward. Thank you. 
Um, can I say without objection, I think we can move forward and accept this staff recommendation, which agrees with the county executive. Okay, and item number four, cybersecurity investment incentive tax credit supplement program. Um, I see, Mr. Walau, that you have a, you says that while the executive is recommending $100,000 for this program, staff recommends the committee consider zero, unless finance indicates they anticipate use of the program in FY25. Can the finance department please um, chip in here? Uh, Mr. Ali is absolutely correct. Um, the, the, the volume on this we anticipate to be pretty minimal, but we do know that there will be activity that we didn't have in prior years. So this 100,000 uh, enables us to, if that does pick up considerably, we can cover most of it. But then we also have the fact that these funds are fungible and intermingle uh, such that their balances roll. So if we have less spend elsewhere, we could use that as well. So we're, we're, we're open-minded. Uh, we just know that there's gonna be more activity than there was prior. Without objection, yeah. we can move forward. Um, Number five, micro loan program. I see that the staff recommends supporting the executive's recommendation. Um, are there any questions? Yeah. Uh, Council Member Clapp. Great, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, so another item that I, I wanna elevate uh, in context of other conversations to Council Member Balcom's point, right? Um, let's put everything on the table and have a thorough conversation, which I will say, uh, you know, we, we did not necessarily have for some of the previous items. So the, the more things that are on the table for us to talk about and chew over, the better we all and the economic development of the county will be. So uh, the, the micro loan program provides loans ranging from 500 to $15,000 for county residents needing financial and technical assistance to, smart, to start small businesses, and the contractors are two providers, LEDC and Life Asset, um, so micro loans. And I know, uh, I'm less familiar with Life Asset, I know LEDC, uh, clearly LEDC works in equity focus areas and works with small minority businesses. Can you share, uh, shed some light on, on Life Asset, what kind of, work did they do? Thank you for that question, uh, Council Member Glass. My name is Dora Sabikela. I'm a program manager for economic development uh, programs. Uh, so Life Asset started with us since 2018. Um, LEDC has been there uh, prior to that. That is why. So what uh, Life Asset does is they provide um, micro loan to really small businesses. They start actually at $250 and they run up to $2,500. And depending on the performance of those businesses, they could increase their uh, loans up to $10,000. Um, so far, they have been doing pretty good, actually. So they provide not only the micro loan, they provide the technical assistance to those businesses as well, uh, pre the lo loan, during the loan, and after the loan as well. So the technique they use to uh, uh, give the money is, is they use social, um, they use social collateral. They get to bring three to five people together, and those people are one person uses the other person as a collateral. So that is the technique they use. So what happens is once they get the money, if one of the team member doesn't perform well, they reach out to the whole team so that the team sort of holds the other individuals so that everyone wins at the same time. So that's the technique they use. Um, how successful has it been? They have been very successful. Like I said, their focus is on tiny businesses. Their average loan is around $2,900, yeah. and they've been doing very good, actually, since they uh, came to uh, the county. And the demographic of those businesses tends to be? Minorities, for the most part, and we have the data. Happy to share with you. Great. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, that. That is very encouraging and excellent to hear. And so. Going back to the proposal that the council president has, has put in, within that proposal is an equity fund um, of, of $3 million, which is supposed to start early growth stage small companies in underserved communities. And as I'm hearing it, this program does very similar things, right? And so um, what I would like to do is uh, increase the funding for this program uh, two tranches of $1.5 million each. And there's more conversations that need to take place because there's differences in the programs, 
But if we want to support small minority businesses, get them to grow, and follow them and benchmark them, as you noted, following them along the way, we have this program that already exists. Let's support programs that exist in the base budget. And so I would like to, to, to move two tranches of $1.5 million in this to meet a shared goal that all of us have. Sorry, any discussions, Council Member? Um, yes, Malcolm. Malcolm. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I understand the uh, rationale uh, at looking at a successful program and adding funding to that program. Uh, although I think that the scope of the two uh, programs is significantly different, and I don't know if that transition would work. Um, so I'm, I'm willing to put it on the table. I'm just expressing my concern that um, although the, the overall goal of both of those funds is to help our small uh, minority business owners, I think the scope is significantly different. So I'm just uh, putting out that caveat. Thank you. Councilmember Sells? I agree with the sentiments of my colleagues. So. We will iron out the details and reconciliation. Thank you. I I do support the idea of of moving with what Councilmember Glass has mentioned um, and increasing the fund, um, in uh, especially to help you know small businesses in equity areas. That's how I'm gonna frame it um, and. I do think it's important to put it on the record as part of the new list. I was going to say reconciliation. What's it called again? Um, new, and enhanced. new and enhanced list, the list, um, and see um, how other people feel. But I, I do think, especially after dealing with a pandemic, that this is a type of program that small businesses, especially those tiny businesses in equity areas throughout the county, County need. This is the type of investment we need to give to walk the talk about values and uplifting uh, certain populations in certain neighborhoods. Um, so I am totally. So if unless I hear a strong opposition that or opposition in general that we don't want to have this as part of the package, speak now or let's just move forward without objection. Is that okay? Okay, without objection, we're moving forward. So we're going to add it as Council Member well, Glass mentioned. A, in, well, in a second, I'm speaking for a second. Oh, okay. um, he mentioned uh, in Caribbean, if you're, if you're on ground, you said three million, with, which will be in two trenches of one point five million. That's what you said. Yes. Did I get that right? Okay. Do this have? is for the micro loan program. Yes. And I see that today. Mm -hmm. Only a hundred thousand has been dispersed, mm -hmm. and fifty thousand still hasn't been dispersed. And now we want to increase it to three million dollars. To let me add a little bit context to the micro and how it operates. So we provide one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It has been the same since the inception of the program. But what happens is those resource partners have other sources as well. They use SBA. They use the state, and they have a whole lot of uh, different sources. So when you look at the total amount that went to small businesses in the county, it's not only $150,000. It is over $2 million as of today, actually, in this fiscal year. So the $150,000 that comes out of the county, they leverage it. They use it. As an example, like I said, like I said, focus on the small businesses. So every loan has some piece of that $150,000, the money that they get from us. But when it comes to LADC, their average is close to $20,000, which means there are times when they leverage our money, but for most of the time when the loan amount exceeds $15,000, basically they use other sources. And, and I just want to rem, uh, remind the committee that we did have a session last year with LADC, and uh, they did mention that the amount of money that we're giving to folks is so tiny that they do need to have a bigger size of the pie. And that's why I'm supporting Councilmember Glass's motion. Go ahead. And, and, and Councilmember Balcom, you, you are correct. They are not apples to apples, no. right? No. Uh, but we need to get as much fruit on the table as possible to have this conversation. 
Um, I'm just digging myself a hole here, aren't I? Yeah. Uh, um, uh, yes. Just a point of clarification, and pardon my inexperience here. Um, this sort of thank you for raising that point about the apples to apples, because um, I think as you're raising, they're, they're sort of achieving similar ideas to the proposal in the jobs, but slightly different mechanism. So, would we want to explore those mechanisms explicitly at some point um, to sort of be able to compare the, the different ideas? Yes. And how do yes, we want to do that? Absolutely. Right, right. Okay, and that would be part of the 429 joint committee discussion potentially. Yes. So, so yes. Sure we, to get prepared for that. And, and taking okay. a step back, um, my entire, uh, every question I have raised from the dais today, every statement has been about using our tax dollars wisely, not reduplicating efforts, making sure we're investing in the programs that are working. Uh, and that goes for MCEDC and that goes for these programs as well. So I'm being extremely consistent uh, in putting things in the budget that appear to work and that should be up for consideration both at the council level and across the street. And with that, I'm going to request the council staff to draft a letter on behalf of the committee that should be ready by the joint committee session next week explaining especially these two new programs that we're talking about because they need to be discussed there. Okay, so very detailed. Um, so let's move forward. The, we have two more. Yes, six one. Uh, SBIRSTTR, Local Matching Grant Program. Um, staff supports reducing the allocation to $200,000. Uh, while, while noting there is flexibility in the EDF to supplement the programs contained within it. Do we have any uh, um, comments from the county executive, especially based on the council staff, if you agreed or not? If you I hope you don't have any opposition because I do agree with the council staff. I just want to know uh, in November 2022, uh, council bill enacted uh, 3122 that amended the program and also altered both the administration and eligibility requirements for this. It included that new um, phase zero for small businesses conducting sort of research in medicine, biotech, life sciences as they were preparing for their first reward. We're seeing tangible benefits of that uh, in our volume and the efficiency in the impact. Um, so that that worked. Yeah. So are you are you opposing with the staff recommendation? No, you're okay with it. Yeah, yes. 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 Okay. That's all I need. Good. Sorry. Perfect. The, the rate went down, I believe. Yeah. Right. right. The rate went down. Sorry. Uh, with no yeah. concerns, we L L let me let me just say regarding the SBIR and S SDTR, uh one of the last meetings I had, I think the last meeting I had at the council before. Uh, before the, the lockdown uh, was with uh, business leaders, high tech leaders, and Judy is nodding, um, and we were upstairs and we were talking about the expansion of this program because of the law, and Mr. Smith's nodding too, uh, the, the, the program previously limited grant opportunities for entrepreneurial businesses only doing work with NIH, but we recognize that there are more than a dozen other federal agencies in our county uh, that uh, entrepreneurs want to do work with, so we passed a law and, and expanded that. And so, looking forward to, to continuing this. I support the, uh, I, su I support this this particular item, uh, and I just want to say that. With no objection, we're going to move forward. Now, the last one is the tricky one. Um, seven fund for high growth businesses. I'm going to turn it to the county executive. Steam to walk us through that, and I know you provided this this morning, this document to the committee. Who wants to, Mr. Thank you. Stello? Oh, Thank you Mr. so much, uh, Chair Fanny Gonzalez, and, and real, real quickly, um, the, the, this this need for um, funding for companies that are that are moving from concept to to uh, commercialization is something that's that's been recognized a number of times. We've actually talked about it at this committee, yeah. and Park and Planning brought before you a, a report. And what the county can do to help the life sciences sector, and identified this sort of—I uh, think—I don't know whether it's called Valley of Death or Death Valley, but the, when companies are looking for for that initial investment to get to market, there's a gap. Um, the, this um, small business high growth grant uh, program is intended to fill that gap. Um, it is—we've um, uh, researched, and Judy can talk more about. Other jurisdictions, we've researched Colorado, Kansas, uh, and even across the river in Arlington and Fairfax County, which have similar programs which are intended to help innovators um, uh, be productive. 
So um, the, the the grant as is conceptualized is is up to uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars for a, a company that that has a clear uh, technical or commercial objective with high growth potential, um, be undertaken by a Montgomery County based uh, for profit business um, and. Um, the activity that is fun needs to be in Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. So um, in the packet I provide this morning, we, we, we have um, a number of, of uh, some information here for our further consideration, and we can talk about it more in a couple of weeks. But th this is um, a, a grant that requires um, uh, review um, by a panel of experts in the industry, in higher ed, um, uh, uh, perhaps an in investment to, to help um, Decide where where our money goes to help these companies get through that uh, that uh, that gap. Judy, I don't think I have too much more to add other than um, I think I heard a question earlier during the incentives discussion about how does that differ or the concern about this and overlap a couple of our earlier programs in this. So this fund is intended to focus on projects where the incentives that uh, Mr. Hetman was talking about tend to be about attraction or retention. If a, it, it is possible, um, if it were a small business that otherwise fit the, the parameters, that there would have been an incentive to move a company here, a small business here, and then they have a project they're trying to get to market. And if, um, did, I'm not sure if Mr. Hartman mentioned the match, there'll be a requirement of a match, which means they have serious skin in the game and are ready to move forward so that this would be focused on the project they're not given to the company as a whole, which is different from the, um, the incentives mentioned earlier. And who oversees this? Who do you think will oversee the finance department as well? Is that? So we envision this grant will be administered um, through the EDF uh, as these other grants are, are administered. Um, uh, certainly there'll be an active role uh, by the business center and I'm sure there'll be a role with MCDC mm -hmm. um, because uh, 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 and our new innovation alliance that we propose that we haven't yet talked about in the budget um, which is um, because assembling that panel review the qualitative review is is a critical piece of a much larger administration that looks which looks very much like the administration of all the other programs we're doing today Any uh, council member Falcon? Sure. I, I, this is the same um, comment that that I made every time I spoke today. It's hard to it's hard to look at this in a vacuum, and I think that we have this discussion when we have the joint committee uh, session. I agree. I also wholeheartedly agreed, and I maybe for the next discussion have I think it's like to beef this up a little more with more details and how is it going to be the metrics, how you keep track on, on success, who's, you know, more details I think is, is needed for this. And I hope we can get that, that done in the joint session. So Mr. Um, Balal Ali, in the letter that you're going to send to the GEO committee, also add this item as, as one of the things that we need to be discussing. Um, so, we so, uh, I'll move to add it to the rec list so that yeah. it's part of our formal conversation. Yeah, it needs to be added to the list. The list. The list. The list. Um, so with that, we are done with this item number three. I want to make sure that the committee, it's okay. We're probably going to have 30 more minutes with the urban districts. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay? Councilmember Balcom and I have a committee at 1.30, so let's keep going. Let's keep going. So uh, thank you so much for coming. The urban districts, please come up. be done by one if we 20 minutes You have questions, but um, any disagreements with the staff at the no. Okay, that's great, because I don't have any. I see Mr. Logan. Ready, if you can please go ahead while they sit down. Uh, I'm gonna ask to please <coughs> go straight to the point. We know you guys, we know your work, you have been here before, let's keep it brief. Go ahead. 
Thank you, Chair Fanny Gonzalez. Good afternoon, Council Members. For the urban districts, the County Executive for FY25 recommends a total of $12,782,043, which represents an increase of $1.23 million, or 10.69%, from the FY24 approved operating budget. Uh, if the committee supports the executive's recommendation, including the general fund transfers to the Bethesda, Silver Spring, and Wheaton urban districts that are part of the recommendation, uh, council staff has compiled a list at table one on page two of the items that would be added to the new and enhanced programs list. The items from Silver Spring and Wheaton on that list were identified as enhancements in the executive's recommended budget, and council staff has broken out the comparable programs from the overall Bethesda Urban Partnership, or BUP, contract uh, to put them on equal footing with the Silver Spring and Wheaton programs. Uh, if the committee wishes to consider reductions to uh, the urban districts, uh, council staff has identified uh, a few programs on table two at the top of page three. Uh, these programs, um, any reductions taken here could uh, be used to reduce some of the transfer uh, to the Bethesda, Silver Spring, and Wheaton urban districts from the general fund. Uh, and then I'll just mention, jumping ahead to the bottom of page seven and top of page eight of your packet, Picking up on that general fund transfer discussion, um, as the committee is aware, discussions have been ongoing with the committee since the budget work session uh, last spring and continuing over the summer regarding the uh, policy or whether there is a policy um, to govern the transfer of the general fund uh, funds to the urban districts. Table 9 at the top of page 8 of your packet uh, shows that while to some extent the uh, recommended general fund transfer to the urban districts is offsetting an FY25 decrease in the parking lot district transfer to the urban districts, there is still some additional general fund transfer beyond what is needed to offset that decrease. That comes to a total for the three urban districts of about $1.5 million. Uh, and Table 10 uh, copies the projections for the six-year fiscal plan for these three urban districts to indicate that over um, the six years from FY25 to FY30, um, as projected currently, the general fund transfer from the, to these three urban districts uh, collectively is projected to increase by roughly 2.9%. Um, I'll just mention by way um, uh, acknowledging the important fourth ur urban district, the Friendship Heights Urban District, um, they do not receive general fund transfers. Um, with that, happy to answer questions or turn it back over to the committee. Before we start discussion and letting um, the rest of the panelists speak, I do want to make sure the folks know here in the committee that we need to have a follow-up conversation on the funding models. Um, and I do want to request, now that I have my dear colleague, Councilmember Glass, next to me, I joined committee session with Econ and TNE because it's the parking lot yes. district. So yes. after we're done with the budget, we must seriously look into this and look at the Franchi Heights model. I'm not saying that we're going to, I'm looking at you, Ken. I'm not saying that we're following that. I'm just saying that we need a concrete analysis so we don't need to come back to this conversation every, every year. Uh, but that's after the budget. And with that, um, who wants to start among you, Ken? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll start and thanks. Uh, thank you again, Chair Fanny Gonzalez, and I appreciate your comments um, uh, about the funding for the urban districts. As, and we'll have, and, and I know that Council Member Glasses and the t rest of the team and committee are having those discussions about the PLDs, a discussion we've had over the last several years. As fewer and fewer people have returned to the office, there are fewer people using our parking facilities, which um, uh, one, the urban districts. The, the original three rely on a model that includes a, a tax, a property tax. Um, it, it includes um, charges to optional method developers. It includes um, parking lot district uh, transfers, and it includes general fund transfers. And um, we, but we welcome that that follow up conversation. Um, I, I do want to point out, and perhaps uh, we can start with our newest urban district. Uh, uh, Natalie Avery is here from the Friendship Heights Alliance. And as you know, Friendship Heights Alliance is a bid on the DC side and a contractor with our urban district on the Montgomery County side in, in that very urban area. But we'll, we'll go from Natalie. We have Jeff Burton for, from the Bethesda Urban um, um, Partnership. We, uh, and then we'll, we'll move on to our, our friends in Silver Spring and, and Wheaton who are here. I'm going to ask you, Natalie, beautiful name, by the way. Um, <laughs> keep it short yeah. and brief. We need to be done by one. So, 
I, I will make it short. Thank you very much for the opportunity to testify today. Um, the Alliance was born out of the recognition among a variety of government, community, and business stakeholders that cooperation is really key to ensuring that Friendship Heights can live up to its enormous potential. And our place-focused nonprofit coordinates the community building needed to reinvigorate Friendship Heights. And so we focus on the corridor along Wisconsin Avenue from Oliver Street in Montgomery County uh, to Fessenden Street in Washington, D.C. And this is a really unprecedented collaboration that enabled us to form and sustainably fund one of the nation's very few cross-jurisdictional place management organizations. And through the urban district on the Maryland side uh, and, and a bit on the D.C. side, we're enabled to, it, this enables commercial property owners and businesses to really co-invest in programs and services that improve and enliven the public environment, pr promote local businesses, attract retail and office tenants, and strengthen cross jurisdictional collaboration. And I just want to talk for a quick second about how important this cross-jurisdictional approach is, because as a community on the seams of two jurisdictions, Friendship Heights residents and employees experience and use the area as one cohesive place. So supporting vibrancy and vitality on one side of the neighborhood benefits the other and vice versa. So I think I'm going to skip all the way to the end. <laughs> There's broad recognition uh, that's sharpened by the p pandemic that investing in place is not only critical for the comfort and enjoyment of existing users, residents, and employees, but also for attracting residents, businesses, and consumers. Um, the urban district resources ensure that every single day there's a team of people that's, whose job it is to support a thriving Friendship Heights. So I thank you for your commitment to place-focused work, and I really appreciate the, the opportunity to testify, and I'd be happy to, to answer questions about the model, and I'm also happy to be part of conversations around uh, different ways of funding and supporting place-focused work. Um, I've worked at the D.C. Bid Council for, I ran the D.C. Bid Council for seven years, and this is, a field I'm very committed you to. You are going to so. be invited for a follow-up <laughs> question after the budget. I thank you so much for being here. Let, let's go now with uh, Bethesda. Thank you, council members, uh, for having us again uh, and for your support. Uh, Jeff Burton, executive director of the Bethesda Urban Partnership. I will be very quick um, with some uh, initial information and, th and then with some information I think you will find very exciting based on what you just asked for. So first of all, as you guys know from past couple of years, Bethesda Urban Partnership has not uh, received any inflationary adjustments or increases to our operational budget since 2019. We have received some administrative overhead cost increases, but no operational increases. As you all know and are well aware of, based on the economy, um, cost of supplies and vendor costs have have raised for us between 10 and 25 percent over that time period. And also, as you all are very well aware, development in Bethesda has been booming over the last five years, and that has increased our streetscape, landscape, and our overall um, kind of things that we're significantly maintaining have increased. So the exciting piece of news, and very timely, our board just approved yesterday for us to enter into a contract agreement with an outside uh, consultant to study funding models for the urban districts. It will include working with the parking division, uh, DOT, uh, county finance, and OMB, and they will, they're going to do a thorough study that can be used in obviously in all three urban districts, but it will, it will study property values, it will put together a, a package that I think we can use as a model to move forward to kind of solve, because we are, we are in agreement that, that it's, t it's been probably long overdue time to start thinking about something um, a little bit more forward thinking as we've come and talked to you all about. So You're welcome to come to us after the budget <laughs> to, to explain what you said and, and bring your consultant. We got it. You Thank you. Is that okay? Beautiful. Super Sprint. Um, here, I can. I know we have to keep it short. Luisa Cardona, Mid County Regional Director. Um, also here on behalf of Jacob Newman, who is unable to attend um, and can just speak generally for both of our urban districts, Silver Spring and Wheaton, that 
as you'll see from our request, it is to keep up with cost. Um, all of our requests are to maintain um, the level of services that our constituents are used to and be able to maintain the cost. We understand that we're undergoing very difficult conversations of where this funding has to come from, and we as Urban District, Silver Spring, and Wheaton are also dedicated to exploring different funding models. But you'll see from the images and the attachments that we included that it's really just maintaining what we have been doing and what the constituents are used to us being able to provide. Thank you so much for that, Lisa. And I, all of you do a, a magnificent job in Montgomery County, and we do want to have more urban districts throughout the county. That's a conversation that we started a while back and that we're going to continue after we figure out the funding models that we really need to look into. I'm going to open it up for questions. I'm going to start with Councilmember Balkan. Uh, so thank you, um, and and I just wanted to welcome Miss Avery. Welcome to the team. I'm sorry we're running late, and sorry we're you're the last one um, uh, before before we head to the the next session. Uh, but but thank you all. I think that my overall comments is basically the funding mechanism. So not only is that um, a, a very real financial discussion but it really is a philosophical discussion about how we fund these very important areas of our community. Um, from, a, from an economic development perspective, these, these areas are uh, so critical to our economic development. Uh, we need to make sure that they're thriving. We just need to decide how we're gonna fund them um, and be equitable, of course, across the county. Um, so I do uh, have a specific issue to the, the budget at hand, and that's the issue of um, whether these additions, if we're looking at um, page two, table one, uh, whether these are new and enhanced programs or cost increases, right? And um, I think that that, I think that's the distinction of, um, uh, of what we need to, of where we need to go. Ms. Cardona mentioned that from the, from the perspective of these are not enhanced services, these are just keeping the cost. So um, um, if you could talk to that. Sure, um, thank you. Um, the urban districts identified, um, as, as mentioned uh, by Ms. Cardona in the slides, um, attached some additional uh, projects they would um, be able to tackle with this additional funding. So certainly cost increase is a major element of the, the driver here. Um, as, men, uh, as I mentioned, I think uh, previously the Silver Spring and Wheaton programs were identified as, as enhancements when sent over um, with the, um, the executive's recommendation, but certainly um, there is an extent to which they are driven by cost increases. Um, if the committee um, would like to consider those as you know as the same services, including the other maintenance Bethesda costs, um, I would just highlight the three percent inflationary adjustment then as the one item that would be considered as a newer enhanced program, along with the rest of the three percent adjustment. Yeah, I I would like to to propose that only because um, when it's on the new and enhanced list, it's going to be judged against expanded expansion of scope, um, and I don't see this as an expansion of scope. And I love that you said that in on me. <laughs> okay, uh, Council Member Sales. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I just had a question about the uh, Circle Four. Um, I see a significant um, increase in costs regarding uh, marketing for the Bethesda Urban Partnership in contrast to Silver Spring and Wheaton. It's uh, BUP is asking for 229,000. I see Silver Spring is getting 75,000, Wheaton 50,000. Can you, someone explain where this significant increase is coming from and sure. what it's for? Thank you, Council Member Sales, and um, BUP may have additional comments to add, but um, that increases the entirety of the BUP contract. Um, and so you can see it, I believe it's circle 10 in your packet. The, um, the BUP costs are broken out, and so the costs that have been identified for promotions, um, it's 24520 of that 229500 so that's much more in line um, regarding events and promotions specifically with the um, Silver Spring and Wheaton figures. Okay, so what's the overall increase attributed to? What area? 
That's the um, entirety of the Is contract it the increase. Is the streetscape or? That, that's um, everything combined for the Bethesda Urban Partnership. Uh, since they operate with a, via a contract through um, the county, that whole increase in covers um, the operating expenses, the compensation and expenses, all of those increases together for BUP is in that 229500 Yeah, because I'm looking across. If we go, if we want to go section by section, administration, I see 50000 for BUP. I only see 6000 for what is the... So the blue and the green is the blue and the green at circle ten. Um, the oh, blue so and is green that the com are, combination? are components, yes, of okay. the yellow column. Yeah. Okay. 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 Well, I'll. Okay. What What are the staffing levels between the three entities? Because it seems that the largest cost share is. I don't know if it's the. Um, streetscape because everyone has a different presentation and so I'm, I'm looking at the overall expenses and the way that the Bethesda BUP is broken down the other areas are not broken down this way so and council member sales if I can jump in the, okay. the the major difference is we have two urban districts managed by the county so these numbers that you're seeing don't include personnel costs Oh, okay. In the Bethesda and Partnership, that includes all of their personal co okay. costs. Okay, okay. That's probably why. All right, thank you. Councilmember Glass. Uh, thank you all. Uh, Ms. Avery, welcome. Thank you for crossing Western Avenue. Uh, appreciate the attention to the streetscaping, the sidewalks, the trees, things that people need and want when they come to our downtown areas. Basic core function, people don't want to visit or work there if they don't find it hospitable, right? So making it green, making it pretty, um, all that's good. I want to pick up somewhat on, on the questions that were just asked, looking at page three, the overall marketing and promotions, right? Uh, where uh, BUP is requesting 24,000, Silver Spring 75, and Wheaton 50. Uh, that's more than just inflationary. So can you explain to us why a uh, request for nearly 150000 more in marketing? Uh, uh, yeah, we'll start with Wheaton. Yeah. Well, Wheaton and Silver oh, Spring and so, for right sorry. now. Yeah. <laughs> but Carson um, is also here, the program manager for Thank Silver you, Spring. Thank you, for being here. Yeah. Um, I will note that actually for us these differences are because production cost have gone significantly up. So if you look at the Jazz Festival, um, which is a countywide sort of event that Silver Spring host, as well as the Thanksgiving Day Parade, the production cost. So that means stage, lighting, sound has pretty much doubled for these events, which has, for the last year, we forced us to really look and cut in other places and be creative about how we are putting on these events that the community expects. Um, so for us, it really is just, not just solely inflation, just the cost alone has gone significantly up. This includes the Taste of Wheaton, our summer concert series, um, which we also produce. All of these costs have gone up. And so just so I understand it, uh, and I know uh, Mr. Newman is, is home and I hope he feels better, the $75,000 for Silver Spring you're attributing basically to, to, to those two very big events? The cost that has gone up with those two events specifically, right. yes. Mr. Henry, anything else you want to add? Yeah, the major uh, as uh, was pointed out, those two events are seen as countywide um, draws. They're they're held in Silver Spring and live in this budget, but they they do cost a significant amount, and they are large drivers of that amount. Um, they are big events. Love participating. Love attending. Um, and then, Ms. Cardona, could you speak to the Wheaton, the fifty thousand dollars for Wheaton as well? That is where we're looking at the Taste of Wheaton as well as the summer concert series. I will note that. Yes, because we're discussing budget models that we as urban districts, Silver Spring and Wheaton, did request that we are now able to look for sponsors and fundraise. So we are trying to offset some of these costs and being creative about it. It is 
taking time. Even creating sponsorship packages and seeking sponsors is taking some time out of the team. But that we with the county executive are very interested in exploring, okay, what else can we do? And for Wheaton, it's also promoting the plaza so that there is more public rental and therefore more revenue coming in. Great. Um, I see the time. Uh, I love the public events and, and Bethesda. Uh, I understand the, the volume of events that you all do too and it's um, less than the other two so so Jeff you're okay with 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 me not asking you but uh, but this <laughs> I'll save you right um, uh, but uh, appreciate all that and recognize we all love our events also I think it's really important for people to know how much these events actually cost yeah. right uh, how much time and uh, other uh, activities go into all of them so uh, if we want these place making celebratory events it does cost additional money uh, i support all of this budget and thank you for everything that you and your teams that are not here that are doing the work right now what they do too just wanted to add that the one of the reasons why i'm putting together a 501c3 nonprofit with on the Wheaton arts and entertainment center is to raise money that's the whole point uh, for Wheaton and Glenmont. Um, <laughs> with, with no objection, uh, we approved the county executive's recommendation plus a 3% um, increase that we're doing with all nonprofits and, and contractors. Is that clear? And, and just to confirm, the other programs in Table 1 will be considered same yes. services. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and just on that point, um, I, I agree. I appreciate um, Councilmember Balcom raising it because I think it's something that we as a body need to take another look at last year when we did the budget recognizing uh, the increases across the board there were things that had to be uh, increased and were not up for debate and those that were discretionary and appreciate that with that this meeting is finally adjourned